Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we Can go. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh. Life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, hoarders got me on the run. Let me shine a little light. A group on the 50s. Yeah. Love my whole city. Got the little ones with me. I ain't going back to prison. House with a yard. Yeah. What to do, what to do, what to do. It's a date today. <laughs> it's a date today, my boy. I think it's the uh, 16th. 16th. Today's November 16th. Damn, my, what time is it? It's 5:53. We a little late, but it's gonna be all right. <laughs> it's gonna be a, it's gonna be okay, man. My favorite holiday's coming up, homie. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> yeah, we had a turkey and everything, bro. I, I mean, I just, I like, um, I just like the food. I like the congr- congregating with family. Yeah, that's what I like. The family bringing everybody together. There's always that one person that can bring the whole family together. The whole you know family I mean? together, yeah. And I mean, it's just like a big old fucking spread, homie. Yeah, it is. It's like a big prison spread, dog. But just and the day after that, bomb ass turkey sandwiches. <laughs> it just, it's just, a, it's a holiday that just keeps on giving, homie. It does. Exactly. It rolls right into Christmas. All right, today, 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 tonight. Should I say tonight? The day is over with. Got a question for you. What's the question? Not for you, for the audience. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyone ever turn the lights out? Anyone ever turn the lights out on you? Leave you to your thoughts in the pitch dark. Reruns of your past life replaying in your head. Would have, could have, should have. But damn, I didn't. Want to run, but three feet each way is a concrete wall that sweats in the summer. Ever pray for mental strength? Ever laugh hysterically in a room by yourself? Ever wake up in the middle of the night from a claustrophobic dream and try to kick the door down half asleep? And realize that nightmare is reality? Well, today, I want to welcome a man that has served nine years in the Pelican Bay Shoe. It's a hard time right there. That's just... In the shoe. Everybody give it up for Shooter. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> What's that? I said, you're going to make me blush. Hey, my boy, welcome home, G. Thank you, thank you. Welcome home, my boy. And um, I know this is something new to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, I just want you to, you know, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for coming on. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, but I just want you, dog, to feel you know nice and relaxed. You've been through some way more uh, difficult situations, yeah, situations than yeah, say that more than mentally. being in front of a ca- but being in front of a camera sometimes. And you know, what I mean, have a having a live audience. Look at the numbers are already going up, and the people that are watching, you know, what I mean, uh, can tend to be uh, you know you could be the hardest motherfucker, but sometimes shit like this can be a little intimidating. Yeah, it can. It's like the stage fright. <laughs> like right. when you get in front of a, a a bunch of people, I mean, especially being in prison, you're not around a lot of people. It's more coordinated than anything. You know what I'm saying? Like you go to the yard, you're with the same people every day, but you go out to the market and shit, people don't got respect. They don't got nothing like that. So you're in a group, you know, it's kind of like you're used to having your back against the wall, watching everything. Like, All right. You know what I mean? So it kind of get you get anxiety, you get ansias. Yeah. You know what I mean? Real quick. Hey, I'm going to play a drum beat. You guys in the live chat, tell me you can hear it. Tell me you can hear that real quick. So we, we know we're uh, functioning 100%. Tell me you hear that drum beat right there. One time. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Got it. You know what? When you talk about uh, being in crowded places, man, you know what I mean? Um, you know what, bro? To this day, like, uh, sometimes my, my girl wants to go to the, the Pomona Fair. Oh yeah, and if you've been to the Pomona Fair, my boy, that place is jam packed. Like to me, that's not a good time, dog. No, it's 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 not. It, it's like uh like boundary space. Like give me give me, give me my give me my area. Yeah, <laughs> you feel me? Like give me my area around me. 
Like, yeah. I, I don't want butts to nuts. You feel me? I'm not even trying to have that. Butts to nuts, gentlemen. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. But yeah, like I had a um when I got out, I when I met my wife, we went to the beach and um we ended up stopping at a at a at a of all places McDonald's. Right? Yeah. I mean so, everybody wants McDonald's. Yeah, everybody out. wants McDonald's, right? So yeah. I'm about two days out. And um I go around there, this place is jam packed. Talking the mic. This man. place, I'm sorry, this place is jam packed. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about like everybody's there because it's it's right by the beach. So you got a bunch of tourists. Yeah. So I go in there and they got those, you know, the little electronic <laughs> ordering machines, right? So she she has to use the restroom. She's like, baby, I'm gonna go use the restroom. So I'm like, okay. I'm like right there. I got money in my hand. And I'm thinking, like, fuck, I haven't I haven't ordered this shit in like almost like 13 years. Right? I haven't stood in line and ordered anything around a bunch of these people. So I start fucking sweating. And the first thing I do, I catch myself, it's just it's just instinct. I catch myself, I back up against the, the little electronic thing. I put my back against it so I could see everything. So I could yeah. see both exits. It was just, it was just, it was habit. It was like a habit of force. You know what I mean? Just to, to lock yourself in like that. And she comes and she's tripping. I'm just like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. And I'm like, like, I'm just stuck. I'm like, oh shit, like I, I need to get out of here. Why don't you order my food and let's go, you know? I yeah. want to go eat in the car. I don't want to eat right here. She's like, no, baby, come sit down. Come sit down. So we sit down and I'm just like this. I got my hands on the table and I'm like, Nah, I can't. I was like, I want to go. I want to go. Like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the car. And she's like, All right. And it was just, it hit me when I, when I got in the car. It hit me. I'm like, Damn. I'm, like, I did, I did a long time for me to feel like that. That much anxiety around so many people. Yeah. So it was like, cause they're, they're just kids and, and normal, no more. Yeah. You, I mean, it's just families. a bunch of, pe- it's a bunch of people that is one, that's one cheeseburger away from a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can put it that way. You can put it that way. You know way. what I mean? Like, homie, I'm, if I'm ordering my chicken McNuggets, I'm like, hold up. Baby, <laughs> shit, this might be my own, my last nugget. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I feel that. But I get you though, dog. Yeah. And, it, and took me, it took me minutes to adjust. Some people don't, I mean, the average person that's never done time. Um, that's never been locked in a closet for years um, yeah. has no idea. Yeah, because it, it literally feels like uh, like the the the, re- the the regular population GP like general like where mainline where I'm at and all that. I was in the shoes, so you don't have no phone to talk to your family like you would on the mainline. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You don't have like a, a wall phone that you could go and you could call your family in 15 minutes. So I'm sitting back there, and I'm, I'm, all I have is the art of letter writing. Which yeah. is a lost art. And you know what he does snail mail no more. But if you have a if you have a good neighbor, you got a vent. Well, you have a vent, but you <laughs> you're with the same person. I was with the same one of the same individuals for almost eight years. Like this is some, almost the same eight people. You know what I'm saying? So it was like you grow, you grow irritated. You know each other. Like I, I I heard these men shit. I know their schedule. I know everything from the time they wake up. Like we know it was just it was a process, but yeah. So before we get before we get into all that, my boy. Yeah. Um, they call you shooter. You know, yeah. The shooter. They call me shooter. I'm from the Inland Empire area. Uh, more specifically, I'm from the city of Paris. So yeah. Okay. Out and, that way, Versailles County. Okay, and so you go in. You get you. Uh, what was your initial case that you went in for? Uh, my initial case was a first degree robbery with a gang and gun enhancement. Okay, so you go in, and how do you end up in Pelican Bay? Uh, I started my from county. I went to a uh, reception, so I'm I'm 19 years old, right? 13 years sentence is life to me. So they 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 gave you 13 years. Yeah, right? they gave me 13 years. They gave me 10 years for the robbery and the gang and the gun, and then I caught an inside house uh, in an in house case. So I caught an additional three years for S uh, GBI with a weapon. Well, so, GBI for the so for the, not everybody speaks the lingo right here. Right. So, so GBI with a weapon is is a stabbing. On a on a on an enemy. Okay, so you you got caught on on a stabbing. Yeah, I got on caught on in a stabbing in the day room, and then um, so we go right. The judge is being a straight dick. You know what I'm saying? Like they 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 wanted me. I was out there. That I was on the run. All this leading up to it, so they finally got me. So I got a lawyer. All that, anyways. So we go there. So the judge wants to run it consecutive, which that means that I'm gonna do ten years plus the additional three after the ten. You know what I'm saying? So and, I, and this is you fighting the case for the GBI, the stabbing. Yeah, this is me fighting the case. So they're okay. like, well, look, look, Mr. Lee, either take this or we're going to take you to trial. And we know I've, I've already been sitting in county almost damn near a year. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I want to I want to go to prison. You know yeah. what I mean? So like the way you're, you're thinking is you're just you're already you're already like uh, fed up with it. You know what I mean? You're, you're done with county. I want to touch my family. I want to get prison visits. You know, you got another three months. To go in reception, 
you know, if you don't do anything, you don't go to shoot, whatever. You got another three months before you go to an actual mainline where you could hold your loved ones or you could talk to them. You know what I'm saying? In county, you could talk to them all day, but it's just, yeah, county, you know how county. It's not the same. It's not the same at all, bro. I mean, every time I've been in the county jail, um, the convicts, the gangsters. Yeah. They want to get the fuck out of the county. Yeah, they, they want to go and, straight and, to prison. And hit that prison so they can start living. Yeah, st- they can start, start their programming. Life. Yeah, start programming. Start programming. Yeah, so 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 go so you you catch an additional three years. Yeah, I catch an additional three years. So they gave you 10 years for the robbery. For the robbery. Yep. You you go to prison. I do, I do this, yeah. I do this the same day. So I get sentenced for the robbery yeah. for 10 years. They whisk me out, me and my crime, by the way. They whisk me out to another additional courtroom upstairs. And then they 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 uh they convict me for the the GBI. Okay, so the stabbing was in the county jail. Yeah, the stabbing was in the county jail. Okay, yeah, that's where I caught the additional time. Okay, so you you uh you got an additional three years for the stabbing in the county jail. So now you're sentenced. Now you're catching that gray goose. Yeah. To prison. To prison. You go to reception. I go to reception. So uh, I hit BR. This is in 2007, 2008, right? I hit BR. So they just finished with the F numbers. So I get a G number. And by the way, my number is G29566 CDC. So I get there. Why did uh, you why did you right now? Because oh, I just did that. If anybody so wants act, to yeah. run your number, it, 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 yeah. Just to let, let motherfuckers let know that my shit is. They can run it, yeah. So I get there, right? They send me to that. uh D Yard. Yeah. Right? D Yard is a piece of shit. Anybody going to North Kern at that time, no D Yard is a piece of shit. So what they're doing is they and, got uh, and D yard in regards to being a piece of shit. Protective the, custody. It's protective for custody. For SNYs, right? Okay, yeah. So, so they have three blocks, D3, right? So this is overflow. They have one tier, top tier of active mainline GP inmates. The rest is all SNYs, right? So we got to come out, go to showers, hear all the hooting, hollering, and, you know, everybody calling you this and that. And, you know, you walk with your head up because, you know, you're a man. You're a camarada, right? So you walk with your head up. So you go to showers, you come out. Finally, I'm in about a month there, and uh, uh, they move me to B yard. They get all the top tier, right? So they're gonna flip the whole yard now. They're gonna, they're cleaning this out. So they put us to B yard, which is mainline GP, right? So uh, I get there, I see a couple fellas I know, right? That I've I've uh, I've done time with YA shit like that, and I get to one block. Well, uh, um, you want me? Yeah. Okay. So I get to one block, and uh, I get a Sally named Casper, and. Uh, He's 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 one of my good friends. He's a kid like me. We're we're both kids. Yeah. Right? So we get there and um there's this guy that's from uh let's just say uh summer rival that's not supposed to be there, right? And he's he's flossing and we all know he's supposed to, not supposed to be there. And I'm young, so nobody's doing about it. Nothing nothing's happening. So I take the initiative, right? Because I got 13 years, I got life. My mentality is I'm not gonna get the fuck out. So So you felt within 13 years you weren't gonna get out. Yeah, I knew myself. I knew myself going in. Like, I just, I never thought that I would get out, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I I tell that to my family all the time. I never, ever envisioned me sitting here right now. Like, I still thought I'd be in prison right now. So I I, I get there and I I get a couple people I know from county. And I'm like, hey, from, to be honest with you, what what I've seen on on Lockup, NBC, like, they're not supposed to be there. So that's how I approach it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a kid. I don't want to be told, like, hey, you know what the fuck you're talking about, homie. So I approach it and I'm like, look, man, you're older than me. Right. I got these. We know he's not supposed to be here. Come with me. So they're like, they don't they don't take me serious. You know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I walk the yard and I pull out. I rush the dude. I get on him. So when they I start blasting him with, with a with a knife. I start hitting the dude. And uh once the other individuals that I talk to see me, they 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 go and they start helping me, right? So whatever. Dude gets stabbed, removed off the yard. We get we get booked. I jack comes, boom. Handcuffs us. We're going to the hole for assault on an inmate with a weapon for a stabbing. So this is about a month in. Sorry about that. This is about a month in. So it's, uh, I think it's about December 2000, 2007, right? So my Sally, the one I mentioned before, he jumped in. He seen me jump. So he jumps, right? So it's four of us. So they take us back there and uh, we go back there and we go to D6. At the time, uh, B-sides, all mainline all GP, A side. We have it like that at the time, right? So we have a little bit of say in pool where we could have that whole side just mainline because we don't like to deal with the two, you know, the yelling at night. We, we want to go to sleep. You know, we program six in the morning, 
Go to sleep at night. You got respect, courtesy for the next individual. Because the the dudes that are PC'd up and that are no good, they know they're no good. So it eats so at they them. they have no program and they're just exactly. fucking who banging. They're okay. fucking talking, exactly. shit. talking shit. Talking. They're not respecting. Lights out. Mm-hmm. All that. So they yeah they they it eats at them what they did. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it eats at them. So that's that's their little defense mechanism. They they, they lash out at us. You yeah. know what I mean? So anyways, we get there. I got committee within uh, seventy two hours. So I uh, the the stabbing has on a Friday, so I don't go to uh, I don't go to go to committee till Monday, right? So I got the week and I'm I'm getting into things. I'm a fresh start, so you know I'm all fucking for it, all you know fucking exercise. But you know I got to remember at the time that your body's got to condition the shit. I just can't jump in full force and think I'm gonna hang with these motherfuckers. Been doing this shit for like months. And you're talking about the workout, routine, yeah, yeah, the, the workout. routine, the workout. And it's it's a it's a a very hectic workout and you know sometimes you think about the men that give this workout if they actually did it themselves <laughs> you know what i'm saying because the age they give this work i was like jesus christ yeah i'm like 20 some years old and i could barely hang i'm at the top you know top of my shape yeah you're, so you're the you're yeah prime i'm at my condition. prime prime yeah. condition you know what i mean yeah. so and so getting, so so real quick let's right. back up just 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 a tad so what you're talking about is there's a workout being called out of a cell yeah it's and, a, yeah, because we don't get yard that much. Exactly. So, so, so for, the, for the people that don't know. Yeah, for the people that don't know, we work out like this. Don't don't think it's like all gang structure. Not like, no, we work out like this because of our mind, to keep our mind and our body busy because atrophy. What atrophy is, if you stay in one place and don't do nothing for a certain amount of time, you're going to lose your, your muscle structure. You're going to lose everything, you know, like muscle memory and all that. You know how you get big and all yeah. that. Well, atrophy, it's like a lot of dudes, we'll get to that later in Pelican Bay, they still like that and they, they develop that. Like, you know, you see the guys all scrawny. They just look like like they have no muscle. Like they have nothing going for them. So you want to keep yourself busy. So you do like a workout. And and honestly, the workout we do, the routine, not even the, the U.S. military do it because it's bad for you. Burpees and all that shit is really bad, bad for your for fucking your back. back. Yeah. But, you know, they used to do it. But we do that. And, you know, we signed off with case. You know, we get we get ourselves going to keep ourselves motivated because of the the, the scenario and the circumstances we find ourselves in. You're in the hole. You know, we only got books. You got no TV. You're just in a cell with another human being. And, you know, it's like you guys, you're living the same lifestyle, but it's like, like, damn, we're just we're just here. So you got to keep yourself busy. You know what I mean? You learn to read. You learn to write. You learn to educate yourself if you're not educated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's all it. So you're waiting. You're waiting for a committee. I'm waiting for a committee. OK, so it comes on a Monday. Now, remember in the beginning of this story, it was four individuals, right? So one individual I looked up. Two. He was about 36, about 19. He, he hailed from the, the, the CB area, Casablanca in, in, uh, in Riverside. And um, we go and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like, hell yeah, this, this is, one of, this is a, a real homie, right? So we go to committee and he comes out and I'm like, hey, I'm calling his name. You know, I'm not going to mention his name, but I'm calling his name. And uh, he's not looking at me. So I'm like, all right. Well, you can't really talk in the hole. You know, the guards are assholes. They don't want you to communicate and shit. So I see uh, uh, my celly, because my celly's Casper, my, my other celly right there, we, we end up selling up. Well, the other individual that's right there, he comes out of committee. And I'm telling him, like, what's up? Like, like you know, you give him the head nod. Like, that's right. You know, we did that. That's right. Yeah. Well, they're like this with their head down, dog. They're not looking at me. And I'm like, what the fuck? So they call me, hey, uh, Lee, you're up. All right. So back up, handcuff, all that. And I go in there and they're like, uh, you know, uh, uh, inmate so-and-so and inmate so-and-so. Um, yeah, they, they ended up going S and Y on you. So uh, uh, we're just going to let you know that we're going to, we're basically, we're going to try to hang you. And at the time, North Kern was picking up everything. Kern County yeah. uh, DA was picking up everything, right? So not only do these individuals know my reasons, right? But they could give this, all this shit to the, the institutional gang investigator, right? And get me validated ahead of time. And, and and so I'm like, okay, I'm hearing all this. And I, at the time, I'm like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. Fuck this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck these motherfuckers. All right, let's go. I'm really going to ride now. You know what I mean? I'm really going to show these motherfuckers. Like, you want to you wanna do something with me? And, and not only did I look up to you, but it's like, you just turned your back on me. You turned your back on everything that I learned to believe in, that I actually believed in and seen, you know? So they end up doing that. I go to committee. They sentenced me to a... Uh, 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 20, uh, 24 months in Tatchby shoe for the stabbing, right? My first time ever. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to the shoe. So I'm like, okay, I'll go back. Uh, my celly goes in 
And he comes back to the cell and I'm like, what happened? He gave him 24 months too. And uh, we're like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, we're going, right? So I start getting um, more involved into the day-to-days, so to speak, right? I started yeah. learning, not even saying involved. I started learning. I started asking questions about individuals that I see that roll through that are going to cork and shoot. They're going, that, that, that are validated, shit like that. And I, I want to learn because, I mean, I don't like to go into situations I don't know nothing about. Yeah. So I like to at least go somewhere with some type of basic knowledge of, of how that shit operates. You know, I mean, what, what am I facing? And what's it going to be like? What, 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 what's the environment? What, 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 what's going to be around me? How are the guards? What's your experience? Those are the type of things I ask. And more often than not, the older homies will, will sit there and they'll tell you, like, yeah, they'll give you the time of day. But some, a lot of them are fed up. They're like, you know what? You guys don't listen. I'm not going to spend my time with you. But if you get a, a cool individual that you vibe with, and usually I, I pretty much vibe with everybody. I pretty much try to, you know, like uh, uh, see how they act and get on their, their vibe. You know what I mean? So I, I'll push it and I'll be like, I want to learn. And, and, you know, like I said, they'll give you the time. So I, I, I really like delved my time into that, into soaking up everything I could. You know what I mean? Like anything. I, I didn't give a shit what it was. All books, bring it in. And I've been a, a, a big book reader since I was little. You know, I love reading books, but I really, really got into it. And I can tell you the truth. I wouldn't have got into book readings like this if I didn't do that time in the shoe or the hole. Like I wouldn't have been how my vocabulary like this or 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 how, how I carry myself if I didn't go through that experience. I wouldn't be the person that I am right now. The values and everything that I have as a person, as a human, not as an inmate or or, or a homie or anything, just just as a, as a human being. You know what I mean? The respect and and the consideration and the, and the choreology that 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 I developed. Just, just by like me putting in the in the time and effort to do that. So, so was it? So it was a combination of books and the individuals that you were reaching yeah, out the individuals to that to, I chose. Edu- to educate you, and they were really able yeah. to drop you some. Yeah, they dropped me some knowledge. Like I, I really navigated my way because, like up there in the shoe, you get like people got to understand it's a mind field. It's not physical. It's all mental. And and people been up there. For 30 some years since that shit opened 1989. Now they went into that. The, and that's right? Tehachapi Shoe. No, that's Pelican Bay. Pelican Bay. When I went to Tehachapi Shoe, well, let me get back to Tehachapi. When I went to Tehachapi Shoe, that was an eye opening experience, right? So we go and it's, it's in the middle of the fucking mountains, snow, everything, right? So it's about a 45 minute bus ride from reception. So uh, comes March. Oh, let me go back though. After committee, right? They end up, uh, uh, the Hudas end up acting up. And they ended up snatching the homie butt naked out of the cell and hog tying him and dragging him into the day room. Right. So we're all like, fuck that. That's not going to happen. Like, we're not going to allow that. So what do we do? We do a mass cell extraction. Right. And uh, we get, we all coordinate. Explain to the, uh, uh, okay, a mass see, a cell extraction. A cell, you, you do a cell extraction in prison to make your voice basically heard, to, to show that you're, you're really about what you're actually fighting for. What you're telling the who does what it's for. It's, so you're, it's the ultimate thing you can do. Yeah, it's the ultimate thing you can do to fuck with them. You know fuck what I'm with saying? the cops. And yeah. To, which consists of which consists of basically they're gonna get a SWAT team or a tactical team, right? And they're gonna it's about eight people. They're gonna have all geared up. They're gonna have bombs, little mace bombs. And what are you doing to initiate the cell distraction so people know? Okay, so this is what we're doing. So the sergeant will go get at a at an individual. Right. And uh he'll 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 speak of it. What are you doing to your cell door? Oh, what am I doing to my cell door? Okay, so in North Kern, for those who've been in the hole in D6, it's it's just like Pelican Bay, it's cheese grate. It's perfect, it's holes, right? So on top of that, it's plexiglass on the holes, right? So they really don't have an advantage. Like we can't really throw shit at them or not. Like we don't do it that anyway. Yep. We don't throw piss or shit. We're not like that. We don't get down like that. So what we're doing is we're hanging a cover so they can't see into the cell. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's complete black. They don't know what they're coming into. Yeah. You know, we know what we're we know what to expect. You're boarding up. Yeah, we're boarding up. Exactly. We know what to expect. We've been through this before. Yeah. But the idea is is, is 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 psychological warfare. We they don't know what to expect. So so what they what a correctional officer needs to know is they need to be able to see you at all times when they're looking at yourself. So when you block their view, yeah, it becomes a problem. It becomes a huge problem. Because now they can't count. They can't see. If they can't see you, they can't count. Yeah. You got to count at four o'clock for the, for the state. And they need to see that you're alive. You so, see that you're breathing. So, yeah, exactly. So what this creates in the CDC system 
is the ultimate fuck you you can do to yeah. the cops fuck so you. basically when somebody boards up when they sell distract and they block the view of the correctional officer for them to see you then they're gonna gear up like you were saying yeah, they're from there. Up. so and and the and the and the individual on the other side the dude the inmate the yeah. convict He's gearing up too. Yeah, he's gearing up too. So because this this is this is the ult, this is the ultimate uh way to tell the cops saying fuck you. Yeah, it's on and cracking. Yeah, exactly. I'm cell distracting. And as soon as you open that door, we're gonna get yeah, this shit we're on. Get on. So at the time this happens, right? Me and my celly split. I end up selling up with an individual that's uh he's a certain individual. I end up selling up with him. So uh yeah, we all get on the tier. And everybody, you know, it's, it's all voluntary. Just remember, this ain't gang structure. So you, you get asked. Everybody volunteers. You don't have to do it. But, I mean, it's more of so of, of pride that you do it with everybody. 100%. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's all voluntary. Just to be, you know, lay that out for everybody here. Anything you do is voluntary. You know what I'm saying? So we get on the tier. We ask me out. Boom, boom. So all the other races, the blacks, the northerners, the whites, this ain't their battle. You know, we ask out of, out of respect, join with us, you know. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, be honest or not, a lot of the blacks and it's not their battle. Yeah. It's not their business. So it's like, all right, cool. You know, the blacks, we don't fuck with the whites, whatever, loose, loose relationship, whatever. But if you don't want to do it, don't worry. We got this. So at the time, there's about, I want to say we got 26 cells of, of, of homies, right? So that's 26 cells that these cops have to go in top and bottom. They got to run up. They got to take us all out. They got to do it. Cells. So what they do it's is a lot they, of manpower. Yeah. So what they do is they they target the initial individuals that they feel have a certain influence. Yeah. So lo and behold, myself this third one, right? Yeah, We're yeah. on the bottom in the corner. So we got a like a little TV shot, right? Underneath the stairs. So they come, bang on the door, they got the video camera and everything. Lee, uh, I can say his name, he's my he's my friend. Uh inmate Avalos, open the door, comply. We're like, nah, fuck you. We got our mattresses rolled up. I got a fucking sheet around me. Uh, they give you these little cups with like tofu in it, right? Little, little, little black cups with lids on it, right? So I got some boxer string and I put them in there. I make glasses like little fucking goggles. It's for the pepper spray, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is my first time fucking doing this shit, right? So I'm like, fuck, I'm geared up. So my son, you like, got the goggles on. I got the goggles on, right? My son, he's looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing, homie? Like, like, whatever. So this shit, he's like, fuck it. This shit starts, right? Like, I'm fucking flooding the floor. You know, because you know they're gonna they're gonna fuck this. And place you want to slip them up. You want to put baby oil on the you floor. Want everything. They're gonna come running in, and you want to trip these dudes up because that's what we were thinking. That yeah. They're gonna come running in. So now nah, what they do is we're back there and we're squared up. I'm like, you ready? He's like, yeah, fuck. You ready, homie? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, fuck it, yeah, let's go. You know. So they pop the slot, right? We have the fucking the mattress right there tied up. Well, we didn't see this thing, but like two weeks earlier, they just got a brand new fucking battering ram. With little fucking carbonated holes in that you could put in the pepper spray. So when you shoot it in, it, it shoots out like a fucking sprinkler, right? And just douses the whole fucking cell, right? So when I see this fucking thing come in, I'm like, bro, what the fuck is that? This was like, I got it. And he, he thinking, he think it's just going to be a battering ram, right? Because he's from the old school. He's from the 80s and the 90s. So like when they went out of cops, they fucking tried to kill each other. So when it was a cell extract, you didn't, it was like hours. You feel what I'm saying? Like quitting and folding shit like that. So... When he goes to grab it, all you hear is doosh, right? And this, he's covered. I just feel the goggles don't work. The goggles <laughs> don't work for shit. I'm pissed. I can't see nothing, yeah. right? I'm like, fuck. And this was just like, we got cups of water laid out everywhere. So you could just douse yourself, activate the pepper spray, let it drop down, activate. Because this was like pumping me up. Like, yeah, we're going to go 30 minutes. We're going to get these motherfuckers. So I'm messing. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. You know, being the younger I'm like, yeah, all right. So anyways, you know. Truth be told, he did all the work. I backed up and I'm like, fuck, hey, bro, I'm I'm snotting, I'm throwing up. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, let these motherfuckers in already. Let's do this shit, right? And he's like, nah, he's not letting go on the battery ram. They're throwing in these, these little fucking grenades. They hurt like like motherfuckers. They got little pellets, rubber bullets, rubber pellets in it. And it's a it's like a pepper spray percussion grenade, right? But the percussion, it doesn't hurt you. So say it goes off by your leg. It's not like the flash is not going to be like, oh, my God, it's soldered my leg or something, you know? It's just going to spur out the fucking rubber bullets. So <laughs> so they're like, all right, you don't want to go in. So now they got pepper spray coming in through the side door. These little fucking 
little things like this, little metal things on it, right? All going in like this. We got the door locked. That shit ain't open. I can't even open it. You know, the, the homie's like, all right, we're done. Because we've been going at it for like 25 minutes. Like, we made our point. You know, yeah. I, mean, I could barely breathe. This dude, this dude, I, I tip my hat because he's just raw. Just going pepper. Like, he has so much fucking pepper spray on him. I'm like, Jesus, bro. Like, we ran out of water like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. And he's still going at it. Just like, ah, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, fuck, man. Like, fucking animal. Yeah, like, you're a fucking animal. And it, it dawned on me, like, that's the type of mentality that you develop in there. Like, they, 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 they make you, like, they hammer into you. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, they, they, the hoodas or, or the state tries to hammer into you to be like, look at these guys. They're fucking animals. And I didn't dawn on this until I actually sat back and thought about that. This is why they got the video camera. Because they want to show the state and everybody else, like, the, these are what these people are like. So, like, when we do anything positive, they can refer back to this. Well, look at these individuals. Look at what these guys do. Right? So, they pull us out, right? I finally get the chancla. And it's the fucking chancla that we got the door jam with, right? And I get the chancla out. So, boom. I was like, they're like, they're like, uh, is the door open? I'm like, yeah, open the door. So, when they open the door, I just jump at them. Like, like I don't even swing. I just jump because it's a fucking... They got like not force fields, but like shields. <laughs> force fields. They got shields, right? And it's two positions right here. And they got they're facing out like this. And then they got probably about like four individuals in the middle. So it's like a fucking arrow to go into the cell, like a compact, right? Yeah. So I'm like, fucking ah, and I just jump, right? And I'm like, fucking sword. And I'm yelling out all kinds of bullshit, right? I'm a kid. So I'm yelling out, and uh they fucking grab me. Like these fucking big ass hog motherfuckers, right? Like corn fed, probably like I'm not even boast. They look like six five. They might have been like five ten. I mean, they're having steaks for dinner. Yeah, though. they're having steaks. The motherfuckers yeah. like the IGI and the ISU. They're not like regular COs. Regular COs are fat, slobby. You might yeah. have some to stay in shape, but these fucking IGI, they're usually fucking bulked up, corn yeah. fed white motherfuckers, right? Steroided up. So literally, it was like like uh, if you if you dived off the stage and just a bunch of hands grab you, like I literally got grabbed in the air by my boxers and just tossed. <laughs> Onto the floor, right? Yeah. And when I'm getting tossed, I'm seeing all the other people, all the other cells handcuffed to the floor. And they're just watching me, right? The ones that could open their eyes. And I'm like, ah, and I'm sitting on the ground, right? And I can't open my eye. Yeah. And then I hear my fucking, uh, my Sally, they go for him. And I just hear, boop, 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 right? And I'm like, oh, fuck, this was getting it. And then finally, like, oh, you're done. You're done. He's like, fuck you. And finally, they got him fucking handcuffed and shit, right? Yeah. They drag him out. And like some of the seals, like, they're like, it's like fucking three o'clock at night already in the morning, right? Yeah, in the morning. We've been going at this shit since like fucking seven in the in the, in the PM, right? So they they already brought the big wigs from Sacramento because you have the whole whole cell extract, all the southerners cell extract. So this is a big thing, like so you got big wigs from that Sacramento coming down to see what the fuck the problem is. Like this is a big thing, right? So, yeah. uh, anyways, we cell extract. Uh, they get me up. Some of the hooters are like, "Hey, you want to get up, Lee?" And I'm like, "Nah, leave me the fuck alone. Fuck you guys, you know." I'm all about the cause, all that shit, right? So finally, they get us up. They put us back in the cell. There's nothing in the cell. The cell is drenched with fucking pepper spray. We got no boxers, no mattresses, nothing, right? They turned the water off on us. I'm fucking burning. Dude, I'm burning. My, like, look at me, bro. I'm fucking, I'm red. I didn't have all these tattoos at the time. So I'm bright like a fucking camarón, like a shrimp. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling myself, hey, like, bro, like, fuck, like, come on, like, Say something, get us something, bro. Like, get the water turned on. But they're still extracting other people, right? Yeah. So he's like, hey, fool, just chill. So at the time, I'm like, that's where I really learned how to hone in my my uh, pain meter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where I really just learned how to shut the fuck up, sit down, and go through the pain. You know what I'm saying? So that really taught me a lot, too, just how to hold my tongue and be like, you know, you bite, you bite the bullet, so to speak. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck it. All right, I see where you're at with this. It's all mental, like I said in the beginning. Yeah. So don't don't get me wrong. I'm still burning. My balls, everything, bro. Yeah. Everything. Like I know if you experience it, you're at, all that shit is got, sensitive areas. I got I got settled up with a, a dude one time that had to go in the hole. Yeah. And um, you know what I mean? Uh I, I dealt with the dude and um they uh they opened up the tray slot and they started spraying off with the pepper sprays off their belts. Oh yeah, yeah. Saying, get down, get spray, down. Yeah. You know what I mean? It don't go down like we don't get down, bro. No, you no, know? no. You know, so I'm 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 on this dude and shit and then all of a sudden um it was like a fire extinguisher hose, dog. Yeah. You know the, what I mean? The super soakers. Yeah. And that thing said they said and that shit what what that shit does is the gas. Yeah. It and what does gas lungs. do? It sucks up the oxygen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if Can't you're in breathe. a you're in a confined space, the gas expands and it goes whoop, 
Mm-hmm. And and as soon as that shit expands, you go. <gasps> yeah, you can't breathe. It. You just stop there's right no there. oxygen, bro. I was fucking dripping from head to toe, homie. My asshole was burning. The bottom of my feet were burning. Oh, yeah. So when you're talking about the soil, <laughs> you like, know what I'm talking about. Oh dude. my god! I swear to God, when I was burning like that, bro, I said, "Man, the fuck I get myself into." You know what I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that shit was crazy. You know, so, just like sometimes you just like, damn, this is a motherfucker. Yeah, it's a motherfucker. You know I mean? Like you, you, know? you really ask yourself, like, fuck, like you really, like when you when you hold your head up high, the shit you've been through, the experiences, and the way you carry yourself, you know, you carry yourself with that because you've been through that shit. Like you know, a lot of individuals that you come across can't face shit like that. They can't put up with it. They're not built like that, so to speak. And it's not their problem. It's just that's how they're they're made. You know so, what I'm saying? So right now, when you're telling the story about burning and shit, yeah. bro, I mean, it's something you'll never want to experience. No, no. It's like I'm not it's, saying it's worse than getting shot, but it's just a pain. Like I don't know. What it's like to get a first degree or second degree burn, but I can imagine just your your skin on fire. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can't get it off, and if you put water on it, it activates it. Even more. Yeah, it makes it worse. It makes it worse, but that's how you get it off. And then when you rub it, it just spreads Oh, my it. God. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're on the floor. Yeah. So I'm on, I'm on the floor. We're, we're all butt naked in there, right? And uh, it's like, you don't want to look at each other. Like, I'm not talking about asshole naked, bro. In a cell, we got no, no, no mattresses, no nothing. So we sit there for about two hours. We sit there for about two hours. Just just asking. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, hey, bro, like, where do we go from here? You know what I mean? And my mind's just going. My mind's just going, right? So finally they come. They're like, all right, Lee Avalos, you want to take a shower? I'm like, yeah. So finally they go and they take a shower. Well, that was the worst thing ever too because they they put on no cold water. They just put on hot water. So they turned off the cold water intentionally and just put scolding hot water. Because the hot water, if you put hot water, it's going to sink into your pores. Ten times worse, Yeah, bro. it's worse, though. Ten times worse. Yeah, cold water, cold water closes your pores and it washes it off. Right. So they tell us this on top of it, right? They go, okay, this is your shaving day. So since you guys want to act up, Go ahead and get your shower. Take as long as you want. Shave and everything. But you're not getting another shower for three days. So we're like, I'm like, fuck it. All right, cool. So I'm right here and I'm, I'm like, the man, you're putting soap on your body. It's, it's burning, right? And I don't want to even touch the water. My cellie's in there just like, oh, yeah, you know, why fucking watch it? Like, this ain't <laughs> shit, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the razor, hey, bro. Start shaving his head. I'm like, fuck. I'm thinking like, in, at the same time, so I back myself in the shower. I start thinking like, how the fuck does he do that shit? You know what I mean? I'm letting just the shower run and, and fill on me. So finally, I was like, "Fuck it!" I start doing it, and it's hurting, bro. Like I'm, 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 I'm fucking. I ain't gonna lie, it's hurting. Like I can stand a lot of pain, but it's hurting. So finally, I just we get there, we get out of the shower. They give us brand new mattresses. You know, out of out of all of us, out of the 26, uh, uh, 13 of us cell extract, 13 cells cell extracted. So um, the other 13 got lucky. Yeah, the other 13 <laughs> got lucky. They were right. ready for it, right? Yeah, but it was just too late. Like finally, yeah. everybody was just like, "We're done. We made our point." Yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, they take us back. They come with a, a, a point, right? The next day, my, my cellie's already validated, right? He's already headed to the bay. He's just waiting for Corcoran or the bay, whatever, right? So they come with a point. Now, since I'm set up with a validated inmate and, and half of the participants that were uh, uh, with the cell extraction are validated, they hit me with a point. My first point, I don't know nothing about it. So I'm like, I don't give a fuck. What, what the fuck is this? Well, back then it's the old point system. Not like I have right now, STG. And all that we'll we'll get into that, but it was the old point the, the old point system. So, anyways, uh, my Sally ends up leaving, right? Or, or I'm sorry, uh, someone ends up coming through, uh, a certain individual ends up coming through. So we depart. He ends up selling up with him, and I end up picking a new Sally. So this is around March, and uh, probably about a week later after me and him move out, um, I end up getting put up for endorsement for Tatchby, right? So uh, uh, give uh, take uh, give him my other Sally. Casper, he's right next to me, right? So he gets put up at the same time. I leave a week earlier than him. So anyways, I get on the, the, the bus and I'm like, okay, I'm sitting right there. You know, I'm going to the shoe. So of course I'm thinking I'm hard as fuck. You know what I'm saying? You're going to Pelican Bay shoe. No, I'm going to Hatchby. To Hatchby shoe. But it's still the shoe. There's but three thought, shoes in California. Thought, okay, so but I thought you were in to Hatchby shoe, this, this story you were telling me. Yeah, this is the story where I'm going to ask you. This story for when I was in reception. Okay, so Pichu. where was where did okay? I got I I, I got a little uh, try track. Yeah, I got a little back uh, twisted up on. So this cell distracted hap, distract happened where in reception in, in reception in the hole okay. before I went. To okay, got Pichu. you, got you, got you. Yeah, I went back a little bit. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I get to Tatch Shoe. I'm on the bus. We stop at uh, New Delano, which is a 180 prison. We pick up a couple other people that are going to the shoe. 
So, you know, you do your exchanges on the bus. You know, usually they sit all the GP in the back. You know what I'm saying? Because they have all the protective custody and cages. In the cages, yeah. So we can't get to them. We get to the back. I introduce myself with you. Everybody introduces himself. And uh, I get there and I'm, I'm with my head held high. You know, like I'm going to the shoe. Like I actually did something for for the right reasons, I believe. And, and I'm going to the shoe. You know, there's, there's you know, individuals there. And, you know, it's the shoe. It's just uh, the atmosphere. So... I get there, boom. They take me to uh, uh, 4B, right? At the time, 4A is a 180 yard, but they only have one through four block, which is mainline GP. The level two is SNY. The level three is reception. And then half the, to, to, to go back, a 180 prison, you have eight blocks designed on a 180 yard, right? So half of that yard, five through eight block is the whole overflow shoe. 4B, one through eight block is solid shoe. Tatsby Shoe's been open since the early 80s, right? It got closed down for a little bit, but it's an original uh, security housing unit. So they take me to 4B. I get in the cages and they're just, you know, they're shipping us out like, like, like fucking dead bodies to caskets. Like you go here, you go here, you go here, you go here. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, oh, you're going to be in 7B. So I'm like, all right. There was an individual I come with from, uh, from Puente and uh, he ends up being my celly. We end up selling this uh, marriage chrono that yeah. we could live together. He ends up being my celly. So we go to 4B. Uh, we go. I go to seven block B section two hundred eight, right? Uh, top tier. Get on there, and uh, you know they get on the on the tier. Ask who you are. You know you do the whole little rundown, whatever. You know, uh, you get checked out. You're good. So I stay there for probably about twenty two months, and um, I go through the motions. And right there, it's a fucked up, fucked up shoe. The the, the cops are real fucked up because in the early two thousands, a couple of individuals end up stabbing. And uh, trying to kill a couple sergeants and um, COs in Tatchby specifically. So we got it bad. They're fucked up to us. The guards, like, we got no pool, no type of nothing. You're, you're a fucking piece of shit to them. You know what I'm saying? And they're, they're fucking hick-ass white dudes, right? You got no raza, no, no fucking black. I'm talking about, like, like, children of the corn, white people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they're yeah. racist, bro. Yeah. And so you get there. I go 24 months. And... um it's an experience right there. You know, I, I, right there, you get your TV and, and Tashpia is one of the biggest cells in, in, in the state of California. So, you know, I learned how to, uh, really how to work out right there. I learned the, the Pacifics of prison and, and, uh, at the time they were still doing group yard. So you really had to grab your balls and hope that you were good and go out to that fucking concrete yard with 800 individuals that, you know what I mean? That are same killer instincts as you that will, won't hesitate. You know what I'm saying? So, that's an everyday fucking thought to wake up to. That if, if you got anything in your class going in that motherfucker, just remember, if they put you on that concrete yard, like there is no refusing. You, you don't, oh, it's cold. No, no, no. It snows up that motherfucker. And what they give you is a thermal. You go out there in your boxers, no socks, you bust down in like fucking freezing degree weather. So. And when you mean bust down. Like you do, your, you, you basically, you don't do a routine just a routine. You do a routine to stay fucking warm. Cause it's like thirty below. It's early, and these assholes they get you up at six o'clock in the morning for yard. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like you want yard or not. And of course you're gonna be like, fuck yeah, let's go. You know, but you're up at five. I'm up at four thirty-five. You know what I mean? So I'm already ready. So we already got the program. But you know, some individuals they they they, they skate across going to the to the cages. You can't really get at the cages. You know what I'm saying? You can't get at an individual at the cages. So it really test your metal to get up and go to that concrete yard. You know, with and and a couple of individuals passed away. When I was there, specifically on on the concrete yard, got killed, and um, it's it was just an experience. Like you really had to test yourself to get up there and and go through the the they make you the, the indignity that the these cops put on you. They make you feel like less than human. But you got to keep your your sense of humanity in there. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep. You can't just be like fuck you, fuck the cops all the fucking time. You know what I mean? You got to be respectful. Like you know, I'm I'm always respectful until you disrespect me. Like I, you could be an asshole to me. In my face, and I'll, I'll be respectful to you until you you cross that line with me. You know what I'm saying? So I always kept that that type of uh, um, demeanor with, with myself. You know. I'm sorry, Don. No, go ahead. Go ahead. There's somebody that needs to uh, be off my shit, bro. <laughs> Are they be hacking your shit? No, nah, one dude trolled my shit one time, bro, and he right now <laughs> I just muted his punk ass. So. Yeah, don't trip on that shit. Yeah, don't. But anyways, yeah. go ahead, my G. Um, yeah, so that was I did 24 months right there. Or actually 22. Um, so roughly in about two 2009, I get endorsed to um 
to uh, New Delano, 180. It was either that or Sad F, which is another 180, but that's Corcoran, New Corcoran. So I get endorsed right there. I go to the to the 180, and uh, I'm like, again, I just I just turned 20, right? <laughs> I turned 20 in the shoe. So the Lakers just won. They just won again, right? Yeah. So I'm getting out. This is probably about I want to say July, maybe August 2009, and um, they tell me, okay, we're gonna give you a chance because I'm already turned up in there. These these 24, months, I'm already I'm in the thick of it. So this is at the end of your shoe program at Tehachapi. Yeah, Tehachapi. You finish your 22 months. Yeah, 22 months. Right 22 now. months. Okay. Go and ahead. then uh, uh, you're in front of committee or what? Yeah, I'm front of committee. Okay. So they're like, all right, we're gonna kick you to the 180. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, cool. All right. So I uh, uh, haven't seen my family. You know, my grandma comes. It's a behind glass. It's been behind glass for the last almost two, three years that yeah. I've been so far in the system, county, prison, yeah. all that. So I'm like, cool, I get there. So I get there, Delano, 2008. Or no, uh, yeah, this is coming into, yeah, 2009, right? Uh, July, August. I get there, we're on lockdown, right? Because they just, we kicked it off with the Northerners, right? So the whole fucking prison is on lockdown. They just killed somebody, one of us, on another yard. So... Luckily, the, the Northerners are shorthanded right there. So there's maybe only a couple of them in the block. So what they do is they snatch them all up from all the other yards and they put them on one single yard. One, actually a specifically B yard in New Delano, three and four block. Because one and two block were the THU and the EOP, which is like crazy people or transition housing. People that check in, go through right there. That are validated, go through the THU. So uh, they put them in three and four block. So coming probably about September of 2009, they let us up. Right. So I go there and I'm, I'm all gun ho. Right. So my personality is uh, I just I, I, I immediately get in this, in, into things. Right. I go running instead of testing the waters. And um, I, I, I excel. I excel at it. Right. And um, so I'm there probably about six, seven months. And uh, an individual that that uh, ended up curing some type of, uh, let's say, debt or whatever. Got into it with a with a black inmate, and uh, this is on the this is on the when we're going to yard getting released from yard. Okay, so hold up real quick. Okay, so yeah, you get back. you get released yeah. to the one eighty yard. I get released to the one eighty yard from the from Tehachapi. From Tehachapi. Okay, and I'm in New Delano. You're in New Delano. Yeah, now. we're on lockdown because the Northerners they just killed one of the homies. Okay, they move all the Northerners out, so they finally let us up off of lockdown. Okay, because there's no other you know security. Reason risk. for us, yeah, risk for yeah. us to not come up. Yeah. So we come up. And like I said, I, I get into stuff and six, seven months, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. It's, it's going smooth. Six, seven months. Yeah. I mean, when, when you get out of the shoe, it's like you're paroling. Yeah, you're paroling. You're on the main line. You're, you're the main line. It's like so it's, much it's like you're out. Yeah, you're on the streets. You're getting out. You're on yeah. the streets, which is a prison yard because you have so much. I mean. You just have so much going on. Yeah. You have so much to distract yourself with, so much. Go to, yard, go to the yard, you get all the, everything, the, the prison visits, has, yeah. everything you get to, you know, all the educational programs, everything. So, and at the time, the one eight, it's a new prison. So we're like fucking, we're going into this shit. We're going into this shit, right? Yeah. And, um, and I'm like, I told you, I'm excelling, bro. Like I'm, I'm really, you know, not to get too deep into it, but I'm in the thick of shit. Right. Yeah. So that's what, that's why I, 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 re, I had you rewind a little bit because the word excelling yeah, you know, what I mean, I wanted to pick up where you meant by excelling, but I, I, I understand what you. Yeah, mean for those that. that understand what I'm talking about, then they, they understand. You, they understand. Yeah. So seven months into it, anyways, uh, this individual up here is dead with a black inmate, and uh, right there, it's like on a, on a one, you, you you don't fight, bro. If you got a problem, you put a knife in, in each other's hands and and you go at it until hopefully one of you, one of you, one of you guys are dead or one of you guys just give up, one or the other. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh for an individual to do that. To, for those that are listening, to actually think about in your head, the kill or be killed, fight or, or flight or, or run risk, right? You go into that scared, bro. Like, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that's what type of mentality is on a 180. It's all it's all knife play. It's all kill, be killed. Like, you're not, it, it's, it's rare you see just a, you know, a fight. Fist fight. Fist fight. So yeah. when this black, you know, basically tells the homie, I, I don't care what your problem is. And he, you know, he takes flight on him. Well, the whole yard erupts. This is 400 individuals on, on a single yard. And you got half the yard out, the other half of the yard out. So this shit cracks off. I'm coming out to yard in five block, right? And uh, 
I come out and uh, these two individuals end up taking off on the homie. So it happened in my block. This is, by the way, this this incident happened in my block. So it kind of like like fucking uh, split it off from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, so anyways, we're going out to the yard. It happens. Like I see him. I rush down. Right. I'm in the pod when I'm in a pod. I rush down. I have a piece on me. Right. So I start hitting this this fucking uh, black person. This black individual. I start hitting them. Right. And this dude's tall. He's like 6'3", right? Built. These motherfucking these motherfuckers are huge, dog. <laughs> you know, their they're muscle structure is different than ours. So they're pretty big. They're, they're kind of big, right? But if you've ever hit one, then you know they don't, they can't take that type of shit. Their blood or, you know, when they feel it, it's like, oh my God, cuz. Like, oh shit. So when I start hitting this, we'll start screaming. And just like I did, oh, cuz, cuz, S.A. hit me, cuz. And like, I turn around, Right? To see what the fuck he's looking at. And there's like a 12, like a wall of 12 motherfuckers behind me, right? The other homie that I ran up to, he's down. He's out for the count. The other two homies run outside. Now it's cracking off outside, right? So I'm like, fuck. I'm like this. And they're, if you know the 180 design, you got A-pod and you got B-pod like a little pocket, right? Can and I, just, can I stop ahead. you real quick? Go ahead. So just for the record, though, yeah. before you move forward, you're not racist, though. No, I'm not racist. Because you have a black man on your shirt. Yeah, I'm not racist. No, 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 I'm that, not racist. You got, you got Nipsey rest in it's peace just, on your shirt. Yeah, I'm not racist. This is just prison politics. Yeah, this is prison politics. And this is what's Color, happening. shit like that. No, you guys yeah. can see that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just like want to I I I clarify that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Movie. That's why I didn't use the word. Yes, would, 100%. Exactly. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I just want to clarify. This is, so this is just. It's politics. It's, it's race. prison politics. Yeah. And it's racial in prison. Yeah, because that's how it is. So anyways, I turn around. There's these big. Dudes right there. And I know a lot of them. Done time with a lot of them. Talked to them. You know, done a, 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 a business with them. You know what I'm saying? And um, and uh, they see me and I'm like, fuck. I got, a, I got a, a knife in my hand and I'm like, what's up? And, you know, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, they were like, we don't want no part of this. Right? We're, we're, we're good. Right? So. They didn't want that smoke. They didn't want that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they didn't want this. So I'm like. Cool. I back all the way up, right? And I'm not turning my back to these fools because there's I, I don't I don't trust them. Yeah. But my first instinct is to help out the homie. So I go and I grab him, boom, and this dude fucked up, fucked up. And I'm like, here. I give him, I give him the knife. And I I I go, I put it in his hand. I go, look, fool. I'm gonna go outside. If anybody comes, get him. So I run outside. When I run outside, it's fucking it's melee. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit's just cracking. I'm like, fuck. Where to go? So I see this this dude I know from from uh, uh, one of the Crip Hoods, East Coast, and I uh, fly him. Boom! I take off on him. Boom! First floor I see, right? And he looks at me. We register like, oh fuck! Like, damn! All right, fuck it, let's go. So we because, start because you guys are good. Yeah, but we're cool. But it's still the same. I'm not. It's it just it, is what it, it is. It is what it is. Yeah. And I've after after the fact, after the fact, a lot of these individuals I talked to because we all went to the home. You know, I talked to and and um. Like, you know, we, we chop, oh, yeah, you got me right there, bro. And, oh, man, you crazy with it. You know, you, you chop it up because you see these. It's nothing personal. It's, it's a just, game. It's just a game. It's pretty. It's, it's a game that can take your life. It's like, yeah. a, it's like, a, it's like a, you know, you got the different games in life. There's basketball games. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, there's baseball games. There's fucking, but this game right here is yeah, like, a more it's dangerous a, it's, a gla it's a gladiator sport. Yeah, there you go. Gladiator sport. It's a, you know, some, well some people like to call these uh, uh, places like this gladiator schools. You yeah, know gladiator man? schools. You like know, original guy school with Tracy. Yeah so, yeah. so it's just like it can be like just like two UFC fighters fight, mm -hmm. they beat each other's fucking brains out. And what do they do at the end of the fight? They all shake hands. They probably go out to eat afterwards or go party at the they, same club. They, they shake hands, they hug each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just business. That's all it is. It's just business. And and you're smarter for the fact that the dudes that go in there that are racist, like there's there's no sense in it because you're really not gonna get nowhere with it. Uh, homies are gonna shut you down. Like, you know what not. Nah. Miss me with all that bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to start something. Like, you want to use that word? No, you're not going to use that word, homie. Because it's going to start something. Like, you know, and real black in, like inmates, like real convicts, real black convicts, they won't let you use that word. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll, but they'll say it politely. Excuse me, bro. Can you please not use that word? You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of our generation, if you know nowadays, they the use homies it. use that word. They use that word. But in there, it's a, it's a little more um, serious. Yeah. So anyways... I go out there, boom, the yard gets put down, right? They cuff me up. They shoot me to the back. Uh, I'm back there for probably about 
six days, right? They do an investigation to the riot. Uh, find out no cause, all that. Well, they didn't see me stab anybody. They just see me run out and fight that dude. So it's just a simple uh, 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 mutual combat Yeah. On, on a riot, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. So they kick me back out. So I'm right there, right? And uh, we're on lockdown, slam down, right? So we get slammed down, and then the, the whites and the Asians, they end up going at it while we're slammed down, yeah. right? So now the whole fucking yard's on lockdown. Everybody's slammed. The only ones that are operating is the Baisas and, and maybe certain individuals, right? Yeah. So we get in there. I get this uh, probably about three, four months into it. We're coming about 2010 now. And um, I get an individual that comes from Cork and Shoe. And uh, granted, rewind to take. I'm out the hole now. I'm back on the main line. They didn't uh, give me a, a 115 for the, for the, um, excuse me, for participating in the riot. And that was it, right? I get kicked out. Boom, to the same yard. Cool, same block. I get actually I get kicked out to three block. I have the homies moving back to five block. So I get there. I'm single cell, right? Because the cellie I went in with, obviously, we, we split up because we went to the hole. So when I get back, I, I get my old cell back. And about two, three days later, an individual draws up from Cork and Shoe. And uh, he rolls up with a with a with a one time. A one time is a is a little note, shit like that, right? Well, I'm not gonna divulge any, but anyways, I end up stabbing the individual myself, right? Uh, same day, I end up stabbing the mother. I end up stabbing him, and uh, we go at it. We 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 fucking go at it. He, I got stabbed almost 32 times, and I took I I took one of his lungs out. He had to have a, a actually one of his lungs cut out, so hey, he's actually on one lung right now. So. But he he stabbed you thirty two times. We stabbed, yeah, going in the process, yeah. Because he was process. he was yeah, you're, you're you're yeah, he strapped yeah, I gave him one, and um, but we're in a we're in a cell, right? Because I'm not like that, you know. what I mean, you gotta go, you gotta go. I'll give you a fighting chance, bro. You know what I'm saying? So so you gave him a strap. I gave him a strap. Yeah, I gave him a strap. I placed one on the, on the on the thing. I just sat down, and 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 there's no beating around the bush. There's no fighting. You know, there's no like fucking, like oh, we're gonna do it this way. Nah, just hey, dog. You got something coming on me, simple as that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it really, you know, I'm scared because I, I any, any human being's scared. If you're not scared, then you ain't fucking human, bro. You ain't got no fucking emotions. You know what I'm saying? I got butterflies. I don't know how this fucking, I don't know if I'm getting killed in the process. I just know that I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to do what the fuck I got to do because that's what matters in you. You see what I'm saying? Like your reputation builds because of this type of shit. So uh, he's sitting right here. We're on the bottom bunk. I got the bottom bunk. So we're actually sitting like this, and he's probably sitting right here, like next to me. He's toward my headband. I put the, granted, I got my shit in my hand. I'm right-handed, but I have it in my left. And um, I have his, and I put his in the middle. And he just looks at me like with a with a blank stare. And and he's like, for real? Like that's a natural reaction. I've heard plenty of stories home tell me that similar situations where it's just like, damn, this is really happening. You got to ask yourself, like, what for real? Like I really got like I really got to do this, and uh, when he after he said for real, like I just I, I maybe it was like peripheral or just some type of instinct. I felt like he was gonna go for the knife. So when he went for the knife, I grabbed him by his shoulder and I just I chugged it in like I slammed it as hard as I could with my left hand into him, and it caught him. It caught him on his collarbone. It went in, and it caught him on his collarbone, and that he rushed me. But when he rushed me, he picked up the fucking knife. So he has me against. The back of the cell door, right? And we're trying to be quiet. You're trying to kill this motherfucker in, in silence. Okay, you're not trying to be loud. Oh, uh, uh. You're not trying to do all that because you draw attention. You see what I'm saying? Like they're still walking, and people can still hear, you know, and shit like that. So you're trying to kill this. You're trying to do all these crazy ass battle shit in fucking silence. Why but not. You, you oh, sorry, bro. No, you're good. Though. We're not making a. I just a, don't want that to fall. Oh, yeah. Go we're ahead, not making a, a move, right? So, anyways, uh, uh, we're wrapped up like this, and he's. Fucking hit me in the back, and I'm, I'm hitting. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get him in the side. Well, I, I finally switch and I push him off me, and he goes towards the back of the cell. By this time, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm leaking. We're both leaking, right? I gave him an ice pick, right? And I, I, I had a cool little, little piece, and uh, <laughs> I push him back, and he falls in the cells. You got a desk and a seat, so he falls like this onto the desk, and I. And, and I remember I grabbed the, the knife with both hands and I just, I went like that. Bam! And I came down and, it, and to hear like, I don't know if you ever heard a chest bone crack, but it's, it's a lot of force. So, 
And at the same time, he's put he he's he's he grabbed me. He's already got my hands. So I'm like this. And it, it it was like in the fucking movies, bro. Like in the fucking you're like this, you're like, and I'm trying to fucking push. And I can I, I feel it, but it, it's a rudimentary knife. You guys gotta understand this ain't like a fucking knife at a kitchen, it's just gonna go in. Like more often than not, an inmate won't die from a, a prison assault with a knife. And this is very well made. Like it's a manufactured weapon. So I'm pushing and I could I could hear it. And finally, when I know when I hit I know when I hit the bone because he's he he fucking screamed like a bloody murder scream. Like, like it was just the worst. And it kind of caught me up. It kind of caught me. And I was like, fuck. But to say he's catching us because it's all I think he's in shock. And I'm going, I'm, I'm going down like that. And finally, I, I it just it was like butter all the way just in. And that's what passed out like that. I'm like, fuck. And I get up, right? At this time, the, the fucking the CEOs are walking. They're doing, they're doing fucking count time. We've been going at it probably for about almost, I say, 15, 16 minutes. And if you're going into it in a closed space in a cell, that's a long fucking time of just yeah. like wrestling, trying to get the fucking knife, trying not to get stabbed, all that shit, right? So when I do this, this dude's laid out, right? And I I pull the knife out. He's got a fucking giant hole in his chest. Can this story get you? No, no, because it's already documented. I got one fifteen for it, all that shit. Okay. Yeah, so that's the only reason why I'm telling you. I've always been told only tell the stories that come out on 115s. Yeah. So you got, you. they could actually go like if anybody wants to research it, they could go on CDC. If they can get my file, they can see the motherfucking story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you're telling the story, my boy, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, I don't want you to. You know what I mean, no, no, it's good, it's good. It's so, already, it's already documented. Yeah, it's already documented. So 115, I got a one dismay report for it. Yeah. So, anyways, we go to the back. I get out. Um, we get out. I go to the hospital, right? Because he popped my lung. Oh no, trip, 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 <laughs> trip. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this was laid out, right? So the cops come, they get me. Well, this was not unconscious right or or he just miraculously wakes up and he gets a fucking i'm getting handcuffed right i, I think this was this was like i think he's gone right i'm fucking sweating bullets i'm like fuck i'm about to face live like the trial all this shit right so there's a fucking <laughs> i don't know where it was but i'm gonna say it was probably on the locker there was a fucking big pin right and i got the scar to prove it right here i'm getting handcuffed and the who the the, the, the fucking hood is like don't fucking move so he has my handcuffs well, this motherfucker jumps up and he lunges at me with this big pen. Like, bullshit, you know, it hit me right here. And it went in like probably a half an inch, right, on, on the lower chest bone. And it stuck and it filled up with blood. It was it was like so fucking crazy that the, the plastic clear tube immediately just shot up with blood like it, was, like it was a syringe. And I'm just standing there like, what the fuck? And I'm like, tripping <laughs> out. I'm like, hell no. I'm like, what? And I'm like, damn. And I can't move, right? I'm like, oh, are you motherfucker? Fucker, right? And I'm thinking like, all right. And I'm like, shit. And I'm like, all right, all right. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I'm thinking all this in my head, right? So I start panicking. So they they break the door down. They they handcuff us. He ends up fucking just like like not fainting, but he's like gas. He's done. He's like fuck. All right. That was his last like hoorah. Yeah, that was his hoorah. But he got he motherfucker got me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> motherfucker got me. So anyways, um, they take me out, right? And I'm trying to walk out of the block. When you know, walk out. IGI stops me. And right when I get down the stairs, I feel it. I can't breathe. I'm like, I'm short of breath. I'm like, okay. In my head, I'm processing. Maybe it's the adrenaline. Maybe the adrenaline is just so fucking high that I'm, I'm, I'm short of breath. I'm like, I can't breathe. And, and the nurse is like, you're all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool, man. I'm just overexcited. And, and the more I'm walking, the more I feel myself getting weaker. And I'm like, fuck, fuck. So when I get to the fucking outside of the block, IGI is right there. They're like, oh, this motherfucker, right? And he kicks me, right? He kicks me in my fucking leg, right? And I, I, I go against the thing, and I'm like, you know what? I tell her, I can't breathe. I can't breathe, right? So she's like, what do you mean? And then they lift up my shirt, and sure enough, I got a, uh, I got an air pocket. He hit my lung, yeah. right? So they're like, oh, my God, right? So they call for, for the fucking thing. Well, they called the, the helicopter for this dude. Because this dude, granted, I'm taking intake now. This dude's still in the cell. They're working on this motherfucker. They got they got the EMTs, uh, the, the, the fucking... Uh, uh, the goddamn ambulance drove up onto the yard, all this shit, right? So I get to the thing, they take me to the hospital. I got a punk lung, right? They they cut me open, they they shove a fucking big ass tube in there with a little thing to suck out all the blood. This dude is probably two hospital rooms down from me. They got two COs strapped up on me, my legs handcuffed, right? And I'm about three, four days in there because I got a heal. So this is about February, uh, February 4th. Yeah, this happened on Super Bowl. On Super Bowl Sunday. So I'm in the hospital. So about February 8th, I go to the hole. They give me 
my um, uh, lockup order, attempted murder on an inmate, and then they also give me a validation packet, right? So IGI comes and serves me with a with an associate uh, validation packet for for a prison gang. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, cool. You know, they asked for my lockup order. I'm good, right? Um, I go through that for probably about six months. It takes about three months for me to get validated, for them to prove the points, uh, direct links, all that bullshit, right? So finally, I get validated. About six months, they put me on endorsement for the day, right? So during this time of the six months, an additional riot happens on the main line, right? I'm in the hole now. I'm slammed down, what we call slammed down, right? So back in the day when you got validated, it was an administrative segregation. It was a, an administrative call. So you were a security to the institution, any institution. So you automatically went to the hole based yeah. on your influence or shit like, but a bunch of people were getting validated. So it was just like, you know, we we're all getting slammed down. It was like warehousing. So um, I'm back there an additional ride kicks off. When this ride kicks off after it's done, they need bed space. So they, they, they're doing transfer. Now, usually it takes about a year to two years to get from where you're at to Pelican Bay shoe. Just waiting, just the process alone. It, it takes up to, to find bed space. So they come to me and they're like, I've been endorsed probably like three or four times already to the Bay, right? And uh, everybody's going to Corcoran, right? Well, my, my, the, the, the study that I had that I stabbed and a prior enemy of mine, one is housed at Corcoran, one is housed at Tachapi. So the CDC will not send you, being you're the aggressor, to yeah. the institution where the victim's at. Doesn't matter what yard. You could be on a totally different yard. If that individual is at that institution, you cannot go there. So I know I'm going to the Bay now because I cannot go unless it's an emergency override or some type of shit to corporate attachment shoe. So now in prison, in prison, Laura, like when you go to the Bay, like you made it. Like that's, yeah. that's Pelican Bay. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's like, uh, I mean, how do you say it, bro? That's like fucking. Um, like fucking in Thor. What's that? Asgardian. That's like Asgard or I whatever, mean, <laughs> you know? I mean, some people are going to Pasadena City College. And then some motherfuckers are going exactly. to UCLA or USC. Yeah. You know? the hard knocks. Shit yeah. like that. Better education. It's, it's the, yeah. So um, anyways, they uh, they come and get me. It's about three o'clock in the morning. They tell me, I'm like, bullshit. I'm not going. Like, there hasn't been in a, a, a bus to the Bay at a New Delano for probably like a year and some change. So I'm like, Chalice, I'm not going. These fools are playing me, right? Sure enough. Three o'clock in the morning, boom, they come, they get all my, uh, uh, they transpack me, get all my property. I got a gang of property already, right? You know, uh, uh, court cases, I got all my transcripts, all my, because I'm fighting for the appeal, you know, I'm trying to learn the law at the same time. Just trying to, basically, uh, uh, I'm reaching out for shit, I'm trying to grasp something that I could actually comprehend and get to learn, you know? And law was one of the big things that I, that I, I gravitated towards. So I have facts of law shit. Right? Of course, bro. You're catching cases. In yeah. <laughs> so it's all legal. Yeah. It's all legal tip. But so I have boxes, right? And um, yeah, so they come and get my property and I get on the bus and I'm thinking, all right, we're going to go to like maybe Salinas Valley or somewhere and I'm going to lay over for like another year. Right. Oh, man, we, we go from there. Me and another individual from uh, from the West LA area. Uh, he's out right now. Matter of fact, he he did like 20 years, beat his case, had life, all that. All, all that. Uh, Raul Lopez, good friend of mine. Right, he's, he's a regular dude, got out, beat his case. Anyways, he was in a ASU 2 in Delano. And I've known him for years, since like early in my prison term. Right. And uh <laughs> I see him on the bus and I'm like, fuck yeah, what's up, bro? I'm like, where are you going? And he's like, Oh, I'm going to the bay. And we're just talking, like, nah, it ain't gonna happen. And we're gonna fucking lay over. Cause you know, I'm right, you know, when you get indoors, you write your family, like, hey, I'm gonna be here, and and woofy woo, you know how some shit goes. You lay over in another prison for a little while, right? So we go to North Kern. We go to North Kern. We lower for one day, but we pick up nine other individuals, right, that are going to the bay. Now they pick up maybe three blacks, two northerners, and a and a guy, and a white dude that are going to the mainline Pelican Bay. We're going to the shoe. So they put us on the back of the bus, right? And I don't know if you ever been on on the, on the Gray Goose, but it's always the same dude, bald head sergeant, fucking mustache. I think his name is like Taylor or something. But he gives you the same fucking speech: "Fuck with me, and I'll fucking throw your shit off the bus." and and this and that. And he's like, I'm, you know, he's like, there's 90 you motherfuckers and, and we're going to do it how we used to do it and bust you guys all up in the bay in one shot. And we're like, we heard that. We're like, one shot. What's well, an 18-hour drive? So we're like, fuck yeah. All right. Hell yeah. So sure enough, we take a straight shot up there. 18 hours. 18 fucking hours, bro. Wow. Like all the way from Frisco, uh, all the way up there to Crescent City. And 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 for the people that don't know, you're fucking shackled. I'm shackled. Okay. 
I'm shackled, right? To the waist. To the waist. My legs are shackled, right? They give us peanut butter so you can't take a shit. You know what I'm saying? And there's no way that you can get comfortable on these fucking buses. You know what I'm saying? You can't move this way or move this way. And then you're lucky if you get a seat by yourself, bro. That you're not, you don't sit next to somebody. Because then you just got to sit like this. And then it gets weird because you start falling asleep on each other's shoulders and shit. And, you know, fucking dudes are farting. You got to smile. And it's like, fuck. So, and then peanut butter farts are the worst. Oh, bro. my God. They give you the sack. Oh, fuck that. But <laughs> I got it. Before we end this podcast, I got a good peanut butter fart story done. <laughs> peanut it's, butter fart It's pretty story. funny, Donna. So there's nine of us. So luckily, we have the whole bus back, the back of the bus to ourselves. So I'm chilling and, uh, uh, in my own thing next to the toilet. We got to take a picture. I'm just enjoying it, you know, because I was always told you never fall asleep on the bus. No matter what, don't. Don't ever fall asleep. You know what I mean? So I'm like, all right. So I, I don't ever fall. I'm not, I'm trying not to fall asleep. I probably knocked out a little bit, you know, between probably Garville and Crescent Valley or Crescent City. But anyways, we get up there and it's like fucking seven. We left at maybe like four o'clock in the morning. It's like six or seven at night. And we enter this motherfucker, right? And and, and Pelican Bay, well, the first thing you notice is I don't know if anybody listens has ever seen The Goonies, the movie The Goonies. Well, there's a part in The Goonies at the end where the, the, the pirate ship sells out behind a rock. Well, that scene, that 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 little scene right there, that's in, right in front of Pelican Bay Prison. Is it? That rock, yeah. Oh, you can shit. literally walk from the road down to the beach to where that scene happened, right? Where they sailed the pirate ship out from that big-ass fucking rock, right? That's right there by Pelican Bay. So that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, oh, shit. I'm, I'm, it's the fucking Goonies, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you turn, you turn into the prison, and Pelican Bay, it's built inside a crater. It's below sea level, right? The ocean is... A mile away, right? And this is another story about Pelican Bay. If you've been in Pelican Bay, like you know, like when they they got tsunami warnings, anything, they lock you down. They 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 fucking bolt you with a fucking metal piece like this on your cell. So if you die, you die because you're, you're you're the state. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I get there and I'm getting out, and then uh, uh of course Pelican Bay IGI is there to meet us, right? And they're they're running down your whole file. They got all your incidents and all your 115s and and everything like that, right? So I'm getting processed. And it's about maybe 10, 11, we get housed. Well, Pelican Bay uh, adopted a concept that the inmates were too wild. So they were going to use a color scheme of pink to try to calm us down. So when you go to the hole, your whole attire, socks, boxers, shirt, ropa, bedroll, is bright pink, like female pink. And their motto is try to walk, try to walk like a gangster wearing pink. It's some pink boxer down the tier. You know what I'm saying? So that's their motto, right? And uh, so when I get there, I get all this pink shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, because you're used to white linen, right? So I'm like, what the fuck is this? So they're like, oh, yeah, bro, we wear pink. But when, when you get up there, you usually have the slide arms, but you get the fucking chucks, the ties, the, the like old school Converse ties. So, you know, I didn't have shoes in a long time, so I just I was wearing slippers. So it felt good to wear shoes, like like with laces. Yeah. So I'm there for about five days, right? Because it takes you, you get to the hole and it takes you Another initial time to get endorsed to the shoe, which is just like probably maybe 20, 25 feet away from the hole. So five days come up, I go to committee. Um, they're like, okay, uh, we're going to house you. You're endorsed to Pelican Bay shoe. I was like, cool. Well, for those that have been to the shoe, there's two sides of the shoe, right? And there's C side and there's D side. Well, D side is for the more influential inmates. So if you get housed on D side, you're really in the shit. You know what I mean? Because you're you're put there for a reason. But they also don't get me wrong. They also have very strong and indiv- influential individuals on C side. But more often than not, CDC will categorize you and house you on D side based on your influence within the system, or your your crimes, or your your validation, your points, who you know, shit like that. So me and uh, Raul, the homie that I mentioned earlier, Raul Lopez, um, we end up getting housed in six block D six. I get housed in A pod. He gets housed in B pod. Right. So when you go, and I got it on my arm, the corridor. When you go, it's a long fucking corridor. Let's see that corridor real quick. Yeah, I see it. You put it on the camera that. right there, bro. That's Pelican Bay. That's the long corridor. That's five through ten block. If you could, if you guys can see that. Bring it over here in the camera right here, bro. Yeah. See it? There you right, go. Bro. Yeah. See, that's D side shoe right there. And that's the corridor. That corridor stretches long as fuck. Long as fuck. Right, and you got each blocks on each side. You got five, six. So no, five and ten, six and seven, nine and eight. Right, all on that side. 
So what I'm getting, it's intimidating. But at the same time, you're thinking like, I fucking made it, bro. All the mysticism and everything on the base. Like when they get a letter from me, it's going to say Pelican Bay State Prison. You know what I mean? I might have that. That's who, that was my mentality, bro. 100%. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get there and fuck, it was a fucking, it was a, a how would I say? Like, it was show shocking, bro. Because it was like these dudes, these these men, I'm, I'm going to say men, honorable men, have lived probably in the same cell, same pot, same block for like 16, 17 years, right? And there's a, it's like, it's crazy up there, bro. Because you get up there and it's all like, that's where I really learned how to use psychology was up there, like how to read the hear someone's demeanor, how to read the, the 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 words they're using or their character or their you know just the way they carry themselves. You learn how to how to read all that shit, how to pay attention to it. Like when you're talking to me, I'm reading or something like that, you know. And uh, when I got there, I'm all gun ho. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm bringing all everything from down that way. And they're like, boy, you know where the fuck you're at? Like you're in, you're in Pelican Bay. We give a fuck about down there. You know what I'm saying? Like. It matters what happens up here. Like we listen to up here, and I'm like, whoa! Like there's a step back because here I am, 22, 23 years old, thinking I'm gonna get embraced. Like, and I'm, you know, maybe because my ego or maybe the shit you you the work yeah, you put in, the work I put in, and I'm telling these dudes, and and it's like they don't give a fuck, and I'm like, all right, you're not impressing them. Yeah, I'm not impressing them, and then I really had to figure out like it's not about impressing. Like these dudes been through all this shit. They've been through the 80s and 90s where it was like fucking warfare. In prison, like there was a gang of murders, like all that time. And, and you know, I had to really sit back and analyze myself, you know, really do a self analyzation of like how I am and, and how people view me and, and how they, their, their, their perception of me. Like, how do I come across to you? And at the time, I was very egotistical. I was very like, I know, I know, like, fuck, you've been back here. I know. Can't tell you know me nothing. Saying? Yeah, you can't tell me shit. I've been in the thick of shit where you've been in the cell. You know what I'm saying? That's, that was my mentality. And, and it turned a lot of dudes off. And I was like, fuck. So there was an individual that he used to, uh, we used to bump heads a lot. And uh, I, li- <laughs> I lived in the pot with him for a long fucking time. And um, he ended up being one of the, the most persons that I looked up to, I learned a lot from. Because I'm the type of learner that like, I, I eventually I became the type of learner where I didn't ask no more. I just paid attention to what you did. You know what I mean? I learned from your actions, better to speak. You know, I, I stopped really asking because as the more... I got older and into it and I asked, it was more like it was becoming an irritation to people. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, you know what, just let me see how this person carries himself and I'll learn from that. Or let me see how he operates in this type of situation or how he uses this or how he uses that or how he uses mind and this, you know? So I started learning that way, just paying attention to people. And um, like I said, we knocked heads the whole time. Like, honestly, we probably wanted to kill each other. Like over, over like, a, like a, <laughs> it was just crazy, like crazy shit that, a regular human being wouldn't do it. Like, you don't give me a burrito. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't tell me Buenos Dias. Like, I want to fucking kill you for it. Like, that's how, that's how much it's... Cause, because you're, 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 this is what you're focused on and you become yeah, infatuated you become with infatuated it. you infatuated with it. So it's like, and then, and then you know they're intentionally doing it and you can't get to them. And it's like a mind game. It's like a mind game. So it's like, you really got to be strong. And uh, when I first got there, they ostracized me, bro. They put me on the shelf. Like I really had to dig my way back up. Like so what they, I mean by they, ostracizes, yeah, go ahead. Is is that. is like I wasn't. Uh, they were just ignoring me because I was too. Like I know what I'm talking about. So they're like, all right, youngster. You know what I mean? They wouldn't take me serious. So like uh, eventually, like I said, I had to self analyze myself and just reinvent myself basically. So I started reading more. I, I started getting more books. Like like uh, the Forty Eight Laws of Power. All that. That's all. That's all crap. Those are good concepts if you know how to apply them. But it, it, the basic like human psychology of, of the human character, like what makes some, some individual tick? What is somebody's habit? Like this person does exactly the same thing that this person does. So they must be, you know, they must have the same personality. So I know what to look for or I know how to appease or I know how to push the conversation or navigate this situation this way where I don't get myself in a wreck. So... I started applying those concepts that I was reading from all these books and, and, you know, some of them worked, some of them did. And then eventually I ended up, like I said, I excelled on the main, I ended up selling in the Pelican Bay where, where really, it really mattered. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, coming into this, uh, coming into this where I'm at Pelican Bay, um, some of the major figureheads for the hunger strike, some of the coalition, they started issuing, uh, statements 
get ready for the hunger strike. We're going to do it July 8, 2013. Because prior, I don't, I don't want to get too much into it, but we did a couple hunger strikes earlier, like in 2011 and in 2012. They didn't really carry. They didn't really resonate with America like we wanted this one to. So we started pulling things out. And there's a lady up there named, I want to give a shout out to Sister Soul, right? A little white lady from Chicago, but she's a very, very, very well inmate advocate for us. And uh, she's been with the prison a long time. There's another uh, named Dolores, which was an advocate for prison. Her son is Johnny Martinez. Um, she was a very, very, very key uh, factor in us getting the message out of and solitary confinement. So, like I mentioned, the figureheads that that don this because it all it all originated from a, a concept that if no one's familiar, it's called the IRA, the Irish Public Army, right? In in Ireland, Northern Ireland, they locked up three of the key figures, and well, while they're in prison, they did a hunger strike for reform, and they end up dying for their cause, right? So, uh, uh, an inmate by the name of Todd Asker uh, brought the concept to a couple other individuals, and it was time. It was time for CDC to make a change. Because like I said, these dudes, imagine they were slandered Pelican Bay for 30 years. 1989 until about 2016, 17, when we all got released. Prior to that, they were slammed down in, in a, a like a, a fake shift shoe in Folsom or Quentin. Prior to that. So they built Pelican Bay for these individuals. So you got to understand how their mental strength is. These, these dudes are amazing. You know what I mean? The 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 way they could draw, the way they speak to you, the the way their charisma is, they're they're just they're amazing. You know what I'm saying? You can learn a lot from them, and uh, they really applied themselves in their to their certain craft. Rather it be litigation, rather it be a reformment, rather it be advocating or or Scientology. Or I met individuals that are immersed in all kinds of of stuff because we have nothing else up there to do but think of how we can better ourselves or. You know, just get what we want. You know what I'm saying? Like I had pen pals in England, Australia. I used to, I used to write constantly. Like I used to love having mail come in, and and that's how I actually stayed sane was having a piece of mail come in every day. You know, some of the smartest dudes that I've met, bro, and it's blown my mind, is dudes that I've met in the system yeah. that have uh, served uh, an extensive amount of time. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's blown my fucking mind. It is like how I, smart certain individuals have. Like, and that's what that's what's attracting too. Like, uh, it's cool to be gangster and and you know you win it, but I mean, it, it, it's it's very to be intelligent is something like just to have knowledge. And you, you know so when you walk into that environment, that lion's den, I mean, yeah, um, they see right through you. Oh, they do. Like they, they see your weaknesses. They 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 pinpoint them, and if you're lucky, they'll they'll, they'll pinpoint them to you, and they won't exploit them on you. Your weaknesses, though, they'll rather show you where you're weak, or what points you're weak in. So I'm there, right? And uh, I'm in D6. Hold on, real quick, real yeah. quick. Hey, shout out to everybody that's on, that's uh, tuned in right now. Shout out to my boy Smiley. He's saying, Lucky, why you so quiet? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, I do. Real quick, the reason why I'm so quiet, my boy, I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna answer your question is because um, homie is well spoken. And uh, this is a fucking amazing story, and this is an amazing guest. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? And I'm very, very much intrigued in what he has to <laughs> offer on this platform. Thank you. You know what I mean? Because not every day do we get an individual like the homie shooter right here. So Thank sometimes you, you got to take a step back, and this is easy. I mean, I love this shit right here. Like, yeah. I can kick back, and I can just, like, Sip on this liquor right here and hear a fucking amazing fucking <laughs> amazing story, story yeah. an amazing journey in life. Like, dude, like motherfuckers watch movies for this shit. Yeah, they do. They this, made movies on this, this shit. This is an audio book right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This is an audio book and this is a gift for you motherfuckers. You know what I mean, so I hope you enjoy this. Everybody that's, uh, that's tuning in right now, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you motherfuckers. And also, too, shout out to my boy Flox. Shout out to all the homies that are tuned in. Yes, sir. Sh shout out to fucking Weasel. Shout out to Extended Clips. Oh, yeah, Extended Clips. Yeah, I know, Blackie. Yeah, that's my homie right there. Yeah, Extended Clips. There you go. Uh, shout out to the homegirl Happy. 
Shout out to Jennifer Jackson. Shout out to Luis Hernandez, got muted. <laughs> he trolled my shit. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, bro. I mean, you, you, Luis Hernandez taught me a valuable lesson. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what got me with Luis Hernandez is I thought he was from the turf. And if you're from oh, the yeah, turf you're and, you're, and you're trolling my shit, then we, gonna, we need to, I yeah, need that. I need we, that. <laughs> we, need, we need to run that real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. Once I found out that he wasn't from the hood, I was like, all right, what's cool. You know what I mean, <laughs> no offense, but if you're from the turf, bro, yeah, you're you trolling my shit on me. You, you, know got <laughs> you got the game fucked up. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, hey, but shout out to everybody that's tuned in. But this right here, not always will you get cats that are willing yeah. to come on and share this story. Now nah, that could actually navigate the parameters of what to share. And that has the actual, uh, that can actually articulate themselves as well yeah. as you, my boy. Thank you. Man, Thank you. my boy, this <laughs> right here, dog, is an amazing podcast. I'm thoroughly enjoying this shit, dog. My boy Jojo, dog, you know what I mean? <laughs> told me brother, that I would. Brother. Yeah, jo so me, the, up, way, Jojo. the way me and homie are connected is... Uh, his brother Jojo is one of my best homies. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, dog. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you like that? Like that joint? Oh, you you got? I got one right here, with two, bro. You got joint or blunt? I mean, I got, I got. Yeah, this world blunt. Let's yeah, world blunt, dog. You know what I mean? You know. But bro, these these stories right here, <laughs> dog. I know. Yeah. I used to sit back and tell my brother these, right? Like, um, because my brother. My brother's like someone that, not to get off topic, but he's someone I look up to. Like he's he's, he's someone I hold up on high esteem, and uh, like I really, uh, I took his path. Not to say, but you know, he went to prison a lot and got involved. And I took, I basically took his path, you know, and and uh, I'm just glad that I could have someone like family I could share the experience with that knows, like you know, someone like yourself, what I've been through, yeah. or you know, has similar experiences within the system. You know, Doug, fucking. Uh... Can I can I say what Jojo was told me? <laughs> so and the stories about when you were a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So so Jojo tells me his brother, his <laughs> older brother, which is my, my good homie, that when this dude was a kid, he was infatuated yeah. with Italian gangster shit. Yeah, the mafia. He was in, infatuated with Italian mafia. I used to carry I used to carry a binder, people, a binder full of like pictures of Lucky Luciano. All the bosses, like New York, all the Italian bosses. I used to carry a phone and I used to, anybody who would listen to me, I'd be like, look, and I'll break down the knowledge. And I just. So that's, yeah. such, that's such a trip, my boy. You know what I mean? On the path that you've taken in life, you were so infatuated with, with it, homie. Mm -hmm. You well, put, I was yourself, with you the put honor. yourself through it. Yeah, but a different way. In a different way. Yeah, in a, I was on a different culture. The honor and respect that came with these individuals. You know, that the like, they time off. You had power. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was. Yeah, I just took a different route of that venue, you know? Hey, check it out real quick. Since we're taking a little smoke break before we continue with the Pelican Bay hunger strike, which is coming up right now, we're going to go ahead and uh, you want to answer some questions? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, tell yeah me, so if anybody questions. has any questions, go yeah. ahead and uh, yeah, go ahead and ask them right now. Any questions right now? We're going to take a break. We're going to get into the Pelican Bay hunger strike, Got which changed it. Which changed it. Changed it. <laughs> which changed it. Sometimes you just sound like an idiot. <laughs> you just got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which changed CDC history in solitary confinement. Solitary right. confinement. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, sir, brother. Yeah. All right. Off the rip. Where are you from, my G? Uh, me, I'm from the city of Paris. Um, I'm from, from Maravilla, from, from Paris, Maravilla. That's in the Inland Empire in Riverside County. Oh, damn. Live and direct from Australia. That's what's up. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's right. Thank you for giving oh, me support. Much love to the homie Lucky. Dope podcast, my boy. That's hey. Right. Matthew, we appreciate you, my boy. Damn, you, Australia Matthew. turning in right my now. Ethel, huh? Yeah, right. that's what's up. Much love, my G. Thank you for turning in. Make sure everybody that's tuned in right now, they subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Um, share the podcast. Share the podcast. Yeah, let people hey, if you know. You guys got any reform on solitary confinement? Any avenues or uh, any outlets that listen that you know? Just give them a shout out. 
Let them see the podcast. I mentioned some uh, some individuals like producers and um, I don't know if you know those 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 that couple that was in Iran that got uh, put in prison because they were spies. Remember, it was, a, it was a female and a male guy. They were college students. They were, they were camping out in the Iran mountains and they crossed the border and they snatched them up. Well, the the individual that did that, they put him in solitary confinement too. He ended up coming to Pelican Bay and he ended up doing a piece. So if you look on YouTube on solitary confinement, he has a piece on it and it actually breaks it down his struggle. And, and, and basically you, you can see the difference between, you know, you can see the similarities of how they treat you over there, how they treat you. It's, it's not that different. You know what I mean? All we got, all, all the difference is, is we got, you know, meals coming. That's yeah. it. But other than that, yeah. Hey, you got a question from, uh, you got a question from Smiley. Do you know, uh, uh, do you know, Cartoon from Highland Park? He was into Hatchaby. No, I don't know Cartoon. I just, uh, the ones I met were the one I mentioned, Blackie, Animal, and then your other homeboy that was there in Pleasant Valley with me. Rascal. Rascal. Jason Rascal. Yeah. The light skinned yeah. one with HLP on the back of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it says, we don't fuck around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that hey, too. too Blackie and him used to get along with the homie from Avenues, right? And I know those are the guys sort of like you guys' worst enemies, right? But they were, that shit was cool. We were, we were like the perfect, it was cool. We used to crack jokes on each other all the fucking time. Yeah. But I used to love listening to you and that, to the homie and that, the homie from Avenues just go at it about the area and the turf. And yeah. it was funny. It was, it was good times, stories and shit like that. Uh, the homie wants to know how many points did you pro with? Uh, I pro with 93. But I pro from a level three. I got to override because right now uh, in CDC, if you do good, if you're kicked out the shoot, you do good for a year. The point system really matter. So when you take in the committee, the committee has a, the opportunity to override you. So if you're at a 270 or 180, if you're on 180, you'll get over it to 270. If you're 270, over it to a level three. So yeah, I pro 93 points. You have another question. The question coming from uh, the homie Logic. Um, how did you feel about the truce with the Northerners? The truce with the Northerners? Okay, I did. I've done. Uh, I've actually done time on the main line with actual Northerners and um, higher ups in the Northerners, to be specific. And um, to do with them, there's no hate. You just gotta understand. They're just like us. They're killers, bro. They're just the other side of the coin. You know what I'm saying? It's like those are the ones that I, I uh, not say I pay attention to the most. Because like when you get into a riot with the blacks or the whites, the casualties are gonna be on their side. More predominantly than not, it's going to be on the other racist side going against us. But when we go against the Northerners, it's like there's there's going to be people are going to get killed. And you know what I mean? And it's always like that. So I wasn't that intimidated. I was just on my toes. Like I I was always watching. You know what I mean? Because they're 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 they operate totally different from us. Totally different. And they're they're about striking that one blow, and that one blow will be struck. You know, to the T. And it'll hit you where it hurts. And that's how they get it. But no, I had no problem offering. Uh, I used to have uh, um, neighbors, vecinos that were northern. You know, walk, walk alongside them. They're cool. It's just when business handles, it's just you know what to expect from them. You know you're going against yourself right there. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that's... I, hope I that like that, though. I like that. You're going against yourself right there. Yeah, you're going against yourself, you know? Yeah. You ever smoke Moon Rock? Yeah. Okay. Is that Moon Rock? Yeah, I put Moon Rock in I ain't smoking that shit. <laughs> I like it all, dude. I don't know. This shit's borrowed. Hundred percent. I'm not smoking that, though. For real? Nah. This shit don't fuck you up. Nah, it fucks me up. Nah, you want me to roll a different one then? Nah, I got one right here, bro. Or, I'll, I'll smoke this. I don't know what's in it. It's a. Uh, it's a pre-roll that I got when I went to the dispensary. But last time I smoked Moon Rock, dog, I was talking some weird shit, dog. <laughs> I was like, if I was a stripper, I would be a filthy whore. And then I listened to the next thing. I said, what the fuck am I talking about, dog? Mm -hmm. Fucking idiot, dog. What? Hey, check it out. Yeah. Let me see. How? I, hey, you got yeah. a question from JoJo. <laughs> How awesome is it to have yeah, JoJo, JoJo as a brother? brother. This is fucking awesome, bro. It's awesome to have you, brother. I'm going to come see you right after this. To extend Eclipse, how you, how you know uh, Blackie? I just seen him last week.
Hey, can I tell you my fucking uh, yeah? Tell me the, the my peanut, peanut butter, butter story. <laughs> tell you the peanut butter story. So check it out, dog. This is my peanut butter story, everybody. Don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> I tell the most scandalous stories on this shit, dog. I mean, so check it out. He said I fuck with his music. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, send him a shout out. He just got a sorry. He just got shot last week. So send him a shout out. He just got the hospital. He probably should bring some shit back. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good, dog. I mean, I hope, I hope the homie makes a speedy recovery. Yeah, he made, he, he made it. One of my other homies, he, I don't know if you've seen, he died. He ended yeah. up passing away. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Thank you. Yeah. So check it out, Doug. Um, I'm on my second violation. I'm going, I'm in, uh, I'm sitting in, uh, uh, I go to Chino State Prison. Mm -hmm. I'm on a violation. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm in fucking, uh, you Where know. Are you saying The Overflow? I'm in, I'm Where in. you Central? I'm in Central. Yeah. Okay, I'm in Central and Chino, bro. I'm in the holding tank getting to, I, you're coming straight from the county. Mm -hmm. And so it's me and, you know, some homies and whoever the fuck was on the bus, dog. And um, they throw a box of apples, peanut butter sandwiches. In the bags or in the little fucking boxes, the box lunches? It's just a box and it's in the bags. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was actually almost a box of apples and a box of peanut yeah. butter sandwiches, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I fucking eat like 10 apples <coughs> yeah. and I eat about five peanut butter sandwiches, bro. <laughs> you know Everybody I mean? else that won't eat theirs? <laughs> Cause it's hard to eat. Are you coming off the bus or on the bus? I'm off the bus and I'm in the, oh, okay, I'm in so the holding yeah, cell in Chino okay. Central, bro. You know what I mean? You know, so I fucking eat all those apples. I eat all the peanut butter. To, to be honest with you, I'm lactose intolerant, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, peanut butter, like, it's, I mean, it doesn't go good with my system, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, peanuts and milk and weird shit like that, dog. And You know what I mean? Just it always cheese, eggs, all that shit fucks me up, dog. I eat 10 apples. I eat about five, six peanut butter sandwiches, bro. And I got the fucking funky guts, homie. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So, I got this little homie with me, dog. Yeah. This is, like, my second time in Chino on a violation. You know what I mean? We get sent to Cyprus. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We get sent to Cyprus. Oh, and, and, yeah, and Cyprus is 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 tiras. It's like four tiras. It's four, right. It's right. From, four bro. tiers, and it's got bars. Yeah. You know what I mean? And me and the little homie that I was with, um, we get sent to the same cell. Yeah. You know what I mean? And by the time I get from that cell to the cell we're now in Cyprus, bro, my fucking guts are fucked up. You know <laughs> They're I mean? all bubbly? I got the bubble guts, homie. You know what I mean? I got those silent but violent motherfuckers, silent but deadly, you know what I mean? And so I start ripping them in the cell, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this fool was on the top bunk, I'm under the bottom bunk, and this fool pops down from the bottom bunk, and he's got a shirt around his head. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. He's got a shirt around his uh, around his face. <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes. God. I already know. Bro. He goes, God damn. He goes, what the fuck? Is that? <laughs> I already know. <laughs> he goes, he goes, God damn. What the fuck is that? <laughs> and I said, dog. <laughs> I said, there's cows. <laughs> I said, it's coming into the vent. <laughs> yeah, the bastards. <laughs> I said, there's cows, because, you know, there's cows right yeah, there in Chino, bro. Yeah, the you prison. always smell the manure and shit. I said, there's cows out there, bro. It's coming into the vent. He goes, <laughs> he goes, son of a bitch. He goes, he goes, I ain't ever smelled something worse than that in my life. <laughs> this fool from the city. Literally, he know I'm fucking busting an <laughs> ass, homie. <laughs> you know? And he goes... He goes, how the fuck can you take that shit? Because I'm just like in the bottom bunk in my box. <laughs> but it rises up. <laughs> laying like a big dog. Like, homie, I've been here before. I'm used to this shit, yeah, dog. Yeah, this yeah. ain't nothing, homie. And he's got a shirt around. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> and I said, I said, plug up the vent, fool. Yeah. I said, plug up the vent so the fucking smell stops coming in. How did you in. do it with the soap or you did it with the... the he got know? toilet paper. Yeah. And he went <laughs> So this, so I'm a dick, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a dick, bro. You know what I mean? I'm telling him to plug in the vent, and that's going to make it 10 times worse because that's going to stop the airflow mm -hmm. from coming inside the cell. You and know what I mean? got a fan to take out the Yeah. Air. So he plugs up the fucking vent, homie, <laughs> and I'm just getting started, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm just like, oh, fucking shit up. But he says, he says, fuck. He goes, that shit got worse, though. <laughs> and then there was this black fool. He was a fucking porter on the fucking. 
<laughs> he was a family tear, dog. He was a porter. And every time he, <laughs> he come, he come through, he come through halfway to her to her <laughs> He goes, he goes, God damn. <laughs> he runs on me. <laughs> and so it was his shift on the tear. <laughs> And every time he came by our cell, he ran by our cell. Just run it off. <laughs> <laughs> I smoked out the motherfucking tear, homie. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's my fucking story right Hell there. Hell yeah. It was fucking hilarious, man. But, um. So who, but it, yeah, the Mission Kitty, yeah, I'll change my life again. But that's, quite, that's sort of like of, uh, like, like a yin and yang, because I wouldn't be who I am today if I didn't go through the experience. But yes, I, I would have chose college, um, probably finished high school. I went, you know, chose a different path. But if I could, yeah, yeah. If life would let me, I would. I would go back and do it all over again. Because I'd probably be somewhere like in fucking Greece or somewhere in a mansion, you know what I mean? But yeah, I would. All right. <laughs> so Check it out, bro. Yeah. Hold on. Let me pull my drink real quick, bro. Okay. Let's get into... All right, everybody. We're about to get into the uh, Pelican Bay hunger strike, which, like I said before, I want to sound like a broken record, but which changed CDC policy in solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. How do you say solitary confinement? Solid... Solitary. Solitary, but it's spelled with a D. No, that's solidarity. Solitary. S-O-L-I-T-A-R. It's all right. Hey, it's cool, though. It's cool. I fucking auto, 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 auto correct. Auto yeah. spell. Motherfuckers are like, what the fuck is it doing? <laughs> Solidarity confinement? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Before I start, let me give a shout out to my dad, Joe Lee, uh, my stepmom, Georgie, my mom, my brother, of course, everybody who's watching. I thank you guys. My wife, of course, is sitting right here. You can't see her. She off camera, but she right Yeah, here. she's sitting in with us right now. She posted up and shit. Shout out to the wifey. Shout out to JoJo. Shout out to your pops and moms. Thank you. And you know what, bro? This is, I told you already, dog. We've we've you know we've we've fucking we've chilled and shit yeah. before, bro. And I was like, damn, bro, you gotta write a book, dog. Huh? Yeah, you know what I mean. And he's like, ah, fuck, <laughs> you know. But anyways, bro. Okay, so uh, let's lead into the hunger strike. Hunger strike. Here we okay, go. so uh, like I said, the the figureheads of the hunger strike, they're getting the prepare. So we're getting the word out. And one of the ways that we issue the word out in prison. Is um there is a couple new letters, uh one of the main ones called Prison Focus, uh the PLN Prison Legal News, and another uh, uh um outfit called The Rock. Well, these are publications specifically for prison, and you a lot of people, especially us in the shoe, uh, uh purchase them had subscriptions to them. So certain individuals that were spearheading this uh the the hunger strike. End up issuing a statement from all the prison gangs, and it was called the End Hostilities Act. It was called the End Hostilities Act, and um, what that was was there's there's four major prison gangs within the California system, and uh, yeah, let me get a shot. And uh, you know, it's all documented. One's the MA, you got the Nuestra Familia, the Aryan Brotherhood, and the Black Gorilla Family, and those were all so to speak, uh, subsidiaries. But anyways, to get back on the topic, these individuals from these core, I guess you could say, uh, outfits, they came to an agreement, spoke among themselves, and, and hostilities. So that trickled effect to the main line. So that was mean, that basically meant no bullshit. If you don't need to do anything, don't do anything. You know what I'm saying? If there's another way for this person to stay on the yard without getting removed other than termination, then you handle it. That's what it was. Like all... Hostilities between us. Basically, it was just us and the Northerners. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the, yeah, that was the main one. Salute, my Salute. Thank you. Woo, I don't drink. At all. Let's make that the last one, then. No, I'll take, I could probably take one more. Take it <laughs> But, um, so that trickled down to us. So, basically, it was shut everything down. There was going to be no more violence until we reached our goal. And uh, so we're preparing, right? Uh, the, the 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 staff at Pelican Bay, they're the racist motherfuckers you'll ever meet. 
right? You got some cool individuals, like certain CEOs that are like, okay, you know, they don't fuck with you. I mean, when they don't fuck with you, they don't toss your cell up. Or if they hit your cell, they don't move shit. Because yeah. nobody likes shit in their house moved, right? And in Pelican Bay, more often than not, you're single cell. I had an opportunity to sell up with somebody. I'll get that down lower or later on. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so the day comes, July 8th, right? At this time, we're already having uh, world news uh, uh, media outlets start airing the story on Solitary Pelican Bay, Pacific League. Um, we got PBS <coughs> News Hour, big stories, big headlines, big agencies. And uh, we even got a crowd, about 20 people outside of Pelican Bay Prison. Uh, doing this we got advocates going to the state of sacramento we have everything and and to to backtrack one of the things i still want to give a shout out to was was the homie's mom dolores which was a big advocate for us and um she pushed reformed totally and she was a reformed inmate herself did 15 years got out and she really helped us push it so finally the lawsuit is drafted by todd ashkar and um a lot of more individuals are, are getting in a lot of more uh, how you could say we call them in, in, in prison legal legal beagles, right? But these are real, they're like practically lawyers with no freaking license, but they're goddamn lawyers. Like they, they've won money, like to win $235,000 in fucking prison off a lawsuit is amazing. And you're doing life like Jesus Christ. Like, they, like these dudes are super intelligent, but um, anyways, they filed the lawsuit. It goes, boom, it's granted. It's in the court now. Right? So July comes around. We're all on the same page, right? We start. Now, granted, up to this July thing, probably uh, June, May, April, we're saving up peanut butter, right? We're saving up because the store list in Pelican Bay, like when I got there, bro, you had to buy your own. They literally sold toilet paper on, on, on the freaking commissary list. That's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? They gave you your two rows that you got for the month, but you had to buy the rest. You know, and it was 89 cents. And then you got... You could only spend $35 at the time, right? They bumped it up to $55. But you can only spend $35, right? And the prices are enormous. They're gouged, like up the ass. You know what I'm saying? Like they're like for a bag of chips, it's like fucking $4.95. For a little fucking chips that you pay $1.99 at the store for. You know what I'm saying? So on top of that, they got these little chicken, how do I say, cup of noodle, cup of soups, right? And those motherfuckers are like a dollar, bro. And those are all you got to survive on, other than the crap ass prison food they're giving you. So the normal commissary list would be like a couple bags of chips, you know, a lot of fucking sweets. Like I got a sweet tooth up the ass that I developed in prison, like for honey buns and candy. And you can ask my wife and anybody who fucking knows me, bro. I always have a pack of Skittles or hot tamales on me at any given time. <laughs> and I developed that because that's a lot of that's that was a lot of my base diet for a long time was sweets because that's all you had to order. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying what, what the hunger strike is about is, is getting us out of, of, of the hole, right? Like I did I did nine years. That's why I I, I was I was uh, found eligible to be it's it's 10 years or more. So I fell along the mark where I fell into the litigation of the actual lawsuit, of the actual case. I'm 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 on the case. We go through the paperwork, the 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 hundreds and hundreds of pages. I'm actually on the case because I'm a litigant because I did the time right there. So Leading up to that, they're getting ready, right? We're all ready. They come. So basically, you you can't eat for three days before they actually say, or, or you got to refuse, I think it's three meals before they actually call it a hunger strike, right? So you refuse breakfast, anything. So granted, the food there is shit, right? So during this hunger strike, these motherfuckers are coming with trays packed with like, like, it's not bomb. It won't be bomb to the audience. But when you're in prison, that shit's fire. You know what I'm saying? So, so when when you're on a, <laughs> so when you're on this hunger strike, all of a sudden they start packing the trays. They start packing the trays, and what they do is they entice you, and they bring it. They will it in front of your cell. And they're like, "Oh, all right, Lee, you gonna eat today?" And I'm looking at this fucking tray, and I haven't eaten like three days. I got these up in Pelican Bay. They give you these little packets of two powder. Right? They're like little manila envelopes, right? I got about nine of those next to my toilet filled with beans, right? I got about, I want to say maybe 18 packets of peanut butter in my mattress, right? I got beans in my envelopes, in my letters to try to hold me over. 
And right? but, so why are you stashing? I'm stashing this because I got to eat. Like we're going on a hunger strike. So, so, but you're stashing them because what they're going to toss your cell and possibly, yeah, they're going to take all food. Like they, they, like you want to eat. So if you go on a hunger, hunger strike, they're going to come in and fuck. Yeah. Take okay. Your food. So when you, when you go on a hunger strike, what they do is they raid your cell and they'll take any edible item, anything that is edible. So you eat their tray of food. So you'll eat their tray of food. Exactly. So you're not eating. Cause they all know we go to commissary. They're not stupid. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't think these people are dumb. Like it's a cat and mouse game, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you already know. So for those that are listening, don't think these these CEOs and the people that run the prisons are are stupid. You don't their strategies are point on. It's just that you gotta understand we live at this prison. We live there 24-7. So we know how everything runs. We know the in and outs. We know <coughs> the certain day that you're gonna walk and unlock my door. I know that exact time because you fucking do it almost every day. You know what I'm saying? You go to work, I live there. You know what I'm saying? So we're we we inhibit all their little strategies, you know what I'm saying? But so the third day comes and uh, we got an individual, a Gava, a white boy that's in the middle of me, right? I'm in, I'm in a pod D6, 103 at the time. Um, I have a white boy next to me in 104. I have another white boy next to me in 102. I have a black individual in 101. I have four camaradas up top in 201, 202, 203, and 204, right? And um, bro. Yeah. What kind of, what kind of, uh, real quick though, I don't mean to cut you off, dog. <laughs> do you have a photographic memory? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. That's amazing, bro. Yeah. Well, for, not, for I, you I to remember to every, point. for you to remember. <laughs> I can remember, I'm just not going to, you know, mention it. I can remember, every, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, bro. But okay, so I got the four cameras up top. So the white boy next to me, 102, he's diabetic. He has uh, medical issues. So he's not participating in the hunger strike. You gotta, you gotta figure. All races are participating in this hunger strike. All factions, because they're so all, to speak. You guys are teaming up, and you want to get all the fuck fighting. out. Yeah, we're all fighting for the same thing. We all want to get the fuck out of this place, and we all want to eat, live, and do what we do enough. out on the main line. Enough the is enough. Because we, because there, there's, we've been back there, and, and for nine years, bro, nine years, I had no fucking one fifteen. That is amazing. You know how amazing that is not to have any disciplinary action for nine years straight. That is like ideal for somebody that's trying to parole. Is that is that how is that just how sharp Pelican Bay? No, that's just is you can't get in, You just can't. You can't get, get to nobody. You can't get into shit. You like the worst. I thing mean, the only do, thing you can get into is your, your celly, right? Right, your celly, or maybe spearing somebody out the cell. Yeah, if they catch so it. When or, you go, so when you go out to yard, like you're by is, yourself or your you, celly. It's just you're yeah. just in the cage yard. Yeah. So there, there there's there's a thousand five hundred seventy six beds. That means inmate. Well, actually, I'm sorry, not beds, inmates. To Pelican Bay shoe. That's C and D side. That's with Sellies and without Sellies. I would say about 70% of that 1500 is single cell. So you have no opportunity unless those doors crack to get at somebody. So you got to live with people you don't like for years, years on end, or people you want to kill, or people that just that that like sour your soul. You know what I mean? Like you just can't stand fucking looking at them. You know what I mean? So that type of shit. But um so where does, was it, does that happen a lot? In there, it did. When, when after a while, I've just seen the same face, and it's like, you know, bro, I don't well, like your fucking. Like every time you walk by, you got that same stupid smirk on your face. It used to be like and that when too. I get a chance, bro, I'm gonna fucking. Or it'd be like a, like we're all, how would I say, well read and well educated up there, so we have a lot of political. Like I'm talking about Republican. Oh, we love that shit. Like talking politics on the tier about Republicans and the, and presidents, all that. And we break that shit down sick. So we're all about like if we see something on the TV, a topic, we're going to discuss it. So when you discuss it and you feel that certain individual is like going against you, yeah, patronizing you yeah, or trying to demean you within his use of words, it's like it sparks something in you. Yeah. And it's like, hold up. You really got to sit back or it'll really fester and eat at you. And you got to sit back and you'll be like, you know what, bro? Because you'll lash out. You'll be like, hey, homie, fuck you. When I see you, dog, it's on. And you both know these doors are not opening. Because you guys had a heated debate. A heated debate. And it yeah. got into a fucking argument. And yeah. it got into like, it got into cuss words. And then it got into like, it's embarrassing, bro. We're arguing in front of all these people that could hear us. On the and literally, I can hear you. If you're in 201 and I'm in 103, I can literally hear you shit, bro. Like, that's how quiet it is. Like, we use earphones in there. So sound, uh, doors cracking, walking. We're on it. Boom. So check it out. If I would have ate them 10 apples, homie, and, fucking, <laughs> and then five peanut butter sandwiches, and I blew the fucking Pelican Bay fucking theater off, yeah. dog, would I be in trouble? No. 
People what, do that all the time, bro. Yeah, would it be like fucking, don't, don't luck, think it's fucking like a, lucky? You only yeah, that's get, all it's gonna be like. Hey, dog, you got the loose. So, uh, homie, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you know shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> homie. <laughs> you got something coming, luck. Yeah, you got something coming. But I used to do like a like a lot of dudes up there. They're on uh, uh, hepatitis, right? Interferon, shit like that. They got all got hepatitis. Because so, why? Because they're sharing needles. Yeah, but this is remember they've been up there, so you don't got access to all that shit. Pelican Bay is slammed down, bro. Yeah, like a lot of shit that happens yeah, on they, the main line, they you don't get, it before bro. They got up there exactly, yeah. so they had it up there. But they take these drugs to cure them, but it gives them mood swings. Wow, that that what do you call that shit? Like uh, interferon, it's called yeah, interferon. Yeah, there you go. But at the time they didn't have interferon. Off the pill, they used to have a, a shot where you literally have to walk out because in Pelican Bay. When you get released out your cell, you're not handcuffed like in Corcoran or Tatchby. The Who doesn't handcuff you? You're in a pod. They pop your door. You go to the yard or you go to the front or you go to the shower. So it's like if, if anybody's been in the hole and you've been in Pelican Bay, you know, in any other whole environment, you're, you're handcuffed through the slot, escort. If you come out the pod, of course, you're handcuffed, escorted into the corridor. But when you're in the pod, you're secured. So they literally pop your door. Like for yard, I'd be like uh, 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 102 or 103, hey, pod, yard. They'll crack the door. Boom. Individuals come in like we we you get an hour and a half a yard every day, but you get to split it. You know what I mean? You could do thirty minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. But the oh, point is, you you have the choice of when to take your yard. No, no, they so got to split it. What do you yeah. mean? Okay, so like uh, you got a, a hour and thirty minutes a yard. So they go like a, they go by the, the every day, every day, every day in the That's bay. Nice. So you got one on one, one on two, one on two, one on four. So say I'm in the morning. Uh, Rick or sorry, the white boy next to me always used to skip. <laughs> so I already knew in the morning. I'm right after the black dude. Yeah. So I get up, right? I'll go out and I'll tell the neighbor, uh, the, the white boy that was next to me, I'll tell him, uh, uh, 30 minutes, bro. He's like, all right. He'll put the timer on his TV. When it's time, when the, when the TV shoves off in 30 minutes, you call me in. So that's how it was. Or sometimes I'd, I'd be feeling some type of way. I need to collect my thoughts. I'd be, give me the whole fucking time. Or if I want to irritate the individual I wasn't getting along with at the time and I knew it was going to fuck up his program, give me the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's how you could do it. That's how you live right there. It's, it's, it's very, very structured, bro. Very, like, monot uh, uh, monotonous. Let's take a break real quick. Yeah. I got to take a leak. Go ahead, go One go. sec. I mean, you can still talk. You can, there's comments, my boy. Oh, yeah. You guys want to ask any questions? Uh, No. Um, Puerto Rican and white to end zone. Yes, JoJo, I'm mixed. I didn't have those bad guts in Delano. What are you talking about? You had those bad guts in county. <laughs> you need any? I can't read it because I'm right there. Yeah, go over, go over here, babe. Is there? Did you meet any homies? I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, yeah, yeah, I knew uh, actually a, a couple good homies, uh, Garfield and Blue from Salinas. The Salinas car, uh, yeah, I've met a couple Northaniels from Salinas as well from uh, uh, Salinas East Market. Well, actually, a lot of them, a lot of them come from from the uh, Salad Bowl. Oh, what's up, Manny? Hey there, I'm gonna stop by after I'm done with here. Extended clips. Uh, yeah, he's good. Um, I just seen him. He's recovering. Uh, we're gonna. He's gonna do a music video on December first to extended clips. Oh, to uh, Hortensia, I love you and hi. To Memo, hi. Anybody else watching? Hi. I appreciate that end zone. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, the dogs. Whatever. The dogs. The what? The dog snacks or who are those? Weenies? 
Oh, almonds. I thought those were the dog snacks for the, <laughs> the, the, the pit bull. No, no. Watch oh, sorry. oh, shit. I'm sorry. You no, know what? You just good. told me about that, bro. Yeah. It's all good. Just uh, push that shit back. Push this one? Yeah, like that. I know. I keep on pushing it back. Let me go this way. Yeah, you're all good, bro. You're good. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's get it cracking where we're at. Okay. Where are we at? We were at um, talking about taking your yard. Sometimes you take an hour and a half the full time just to piss the neighbor out. Sometimes you do 30 oh, minutes. Yeah. Set the timer. So this is uh, this is you in, in Pelican Bay um, uh, going leading up to the hunger strikes. Well, you you, you kind of backtracked. A little yeah, bit, I backtracked right? a little bit. Yeah. So back to the hunger strike. So uh, granted, like I told you, I'm, I'm trying to survive of these little packets I made of, of beans, right? So... About the fifth day comes, right? And I told you they're trying to taunt us with these trays, right? The bomb ass food. And uh, what well, we, 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 I considered bomb ass food at the time. Yeah. And uh, so, anyways, the fifth day, they come in about five o'clock in the morning. And um, it's about 10 of them. And it's two to each cell. So we're all up. Granted, I get up every morning at four. And uh, most of the tier does. And um, they hit our cell. They hit my cell, cuff me up, take me out. So at the time, I'm trying to sell up with an individual I've been trying to sell up with for the last two years. And uh, what I don't know at the time why they're cuffing me up is they granted my cell, my, my, uh, my uh, cell move, right? They granted your cell move, and here you are thinking they're going to hit your cell. They're going to hit my cell. So it's a positive. It's, you think a, it's positive, a negative, right? So this is the fifth day of the hunger strike. I go to the short quarter, which is a uh, one through four block where certain people are. And I end up going to two block C section cell 208. And for those that are listening that were there, they know exactly who's in that cell. So I end up becoming a selling. And uh, this is an individual that I've looked up to for years, known him for years. And uh, we just, we hit it off. So I ended up selling up with him. I learned a lot from him, all that. So uh, we end up going through this hunger strike. Well, during Pelican Bay stay, they got this thing called doors, right? It happens every month. And what they do is they go, they take out two sections and they go and they, they make sure the doors to your cell are working right because they're mechanicalized, yeah. right? So they call it what they call tune-ups. But at the same time, they're going through your letters or they're, they're checking your cell for weapons or shit like that, right? Yeah. So they do one of these during the hunger strike. And... uh they take us to seaside visiting, right? And that's where the. Uh, oh, but let, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. The hunger strike was for the five core demands, was because we have a lot of uh, family coming up there to see us, and our visiting was only about an hour and a half. Yeah, that's that's one big thing you left out is why, why? the hunger strike. Yeah, was I'm right. sorry. Let me let me backtrack. So we had five core demands of the hunger strike, right? One was of course top get us the fuck out the shoe. Right. The other one, second one was for education, how we could educate ourselves more college programs, um, uh, uh, domestic violence, drug abuse, all types of programs. Right. Yeah. The third one was for us because we didn't think we we're going to get out the shoe with this. We just thought we were going to better our environment. Right. We yeah. didn't think this was going to have the impact it that did. it did and kick us all out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what our our goal was to better our environment. So anything that you're getting on the main line, in your bottles and packages, we want. Yeah. We want two packages a year instead of one. Literally, people, for those that have been in prison, a package is a 30-pound package of snacks, uh, toiletries, uh, uh, any uh, hygiene products. But we only get one once a year, 12 months. Every 12 months, you get a single 30-pound package in the hole or the shoe. right? On the main line, you get three. And if you're doing real good, you could get nine to 10 to 12, whatever, however you want to do it. But those come in handy. So those who've been to prison, you know how much a package is. So we wanted to a year, one every six months. We wanted a digression program to ease us out of the shoe. If we didn't have anything going for us, there should be no reason why we're back here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So those were the five core demands. And, uh, you know, the, the last three were basically give us everything we got on the main line. We want better our supplies. Uh, uh, and we want phone privileges. So we wanted to do that. What do you say? Rest in Paris, Curly? Yeah. 
Hey, thank you, Francisco. I appreciate that, bro. That's a good one, Sotelo. But um, shout out to Bunny and Rachel as well. And I shout out to Bunny and Rachel. But yeah, rest in peace, Curly. Rest in peace, Curly. But um, yeah. So where was I? You were at. Yeah, oh, the packages. packages. Yeah. So the the main core demands. So we got those established, right? Yeah. What were you gonna say? No, go ahead. Okay. So we got those established. So that's our, our, our main thing is. Now, the major figureheads of the hunger strike put it out there through, through the prison grapevine. If you guys have anything else of substance that, that will push this through, that will help us in our core demands, then please feel free to write it down. So you got like individuals just writing nonsense down. Like, give us fucking cable TV. Cable TV. <laughs> give us tablets. Give us rated R movies. Oh, yeah. For those in prison, for those who have been in the audience, you don't get rated R movies. We only get fucking PG 13. All right. So it's, it's, it, we don't get to see a lot of the good ass fucking movies. I mean, you want to see some ass. You want to see some Yeah, titties. you want to see some titties. You know? I mean, you need some motherfucking, uh, uh, you know, I mean, some cocoa butter material. And, and, I mean? the, and the thing was uh, for us to get better channels on the TV. That was the main thing. We wanted fucking channels because we had regular fucking channels, but we had in the whole state, we had BT and ESPN. Now, ESPN was like a fucking god. The ESPN you can't channel. can't beat that bitch, son. That's we new, can't too. beat that. That's new so, since I've been. Yeah. So we Pelican Bay's had that for years since the yeah. 90s. Yeah, the Damn. BET and ESPN is always known for that. Those wow. channels in the shoe or in Pelican Bay mainline, all that. So, but we wanted more channels. We wanted like fucking uh, uh, movie channels. Yeah. This, thus, movies, Showtime, uh, Showtime like shit. But uh, we were stretching. So, anyways, uh, five days into it, they moved me. I sell up with this 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 figure, right? And I'm with him, and we're going through the motions, and um, we're going through it, and. Uh, about the ninth, tenth day in, they snatch me up from his cell. They take us to medical, and they bring him back, and they snatch me up. So what their thing was, their concept was, or their idea, basically, their strategy for, for the people to think that I was leaving. You know what I mean? Because a lot of that time, at that time, a lot of things would happen like that. People were going to medical and not coming back. They're acting like you were locking it up. Exactly. They're yeah. acting like I was locking it up. But... Lo and behold, I know you don't want to say it like that, bro. Cause yeah. it's like blasphemy coming yeah, out it's your like mouth, blasphemy, dog. Because you it know never what I mean, happened. and I get it, bro. You know what I mean. So don't take no offense when I tell yeah. you. Oh, I know, I, I know. Just so people I know. Just you so to when say they it, say bro. by when they say lock when you're locking it up, your piece ain't up. They took you to med. They took you to to medical, mm -hmm. and you didn't come back. Just like in the county jail, our uh, you know uh, once upon a time goes in the gang module, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. And oh, so fools, you know that, yeah. And fools would go. I was in the gang module, Old County, 3,400, dog. Six-man cells, bro. You know what Clown I mean? Suits? Clown suits, yeah. bro. You know what I mean? That's when I was in the gang module. But anyways, dudes would go on attorney visits. And not come back. And they wouldn't come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, yeah, homie. Yeah. You better go out for two days uh, on attorney visit. Hey, can you bring your shit out? <laughs> roll this shit up. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So they yeah. did that, right? But lo and behold, when I get to medical, I start seeing individuals I know. And they start placing us in the medical holding cells. It's about 11 of us. It's a right. setup. It's a setup. Yeah. So this is about. This is good. About three o'clock in the. Or no, no, no. I'm sorry. About three o'clock in the afternoon. They take me. And on, on, on top of it, I had a medical request in for dental. I was going to get my. So wisdom it, it made sense. It made sense. So yeah. I, told, I told the individual I'm going to medical. He's like, yeah, I, you know, everything cleared. Go ahead. Yeah. And the thing was that if they set you up, do something to make the alarm go off. So we know. If it's that drastic. So that was like, that was the last ditch effort. If, 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 if they don't know that they're going to fuck you off and send you somewhere, get the alarm going. So we know it's legit. You know what I'm saying? So that was a little thing that me and me and my celly so set up. Yeah. So how do you, how do you do that? You get off on the hoodas, you try yeah, to you do, do something. You, do. you gank away. Yeah. Anything you know? to make that alarm go off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I get down there. I see about 11 individuals. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, they stay, they, they tell us, all right, uh, uh, Cuff up, get shackled, right? We're thinking they're going to move us to Seaside, right? Because at the time, what they're doing is for individuals that are putting in longer than five days, they're moving them to an area in Pelican Bay called C12. Now, for those that are in C12, there was only two good pods in there. That was E and F where you had solid individuals. The rest, D, C, B, and A were for those individuals that were checking in from the shoe, locking it up from the shoe. You would get housed in C12, THU. 
picture, so, picture yeah. perfect, baby. Yeah, there you go. So it's like how you, it, yeah. <laughs> so you go right there, right? And uh, you would go, and it had that stigma. Like nobody wants to go to C12. So all the CEOs are coming by ourselves and be like, oh, okay, you guys think you're gonna go somewhere? We're gonna send you to C12. How do you guys think about that? Yeah. So I'm I'm sitting there. I'm like, fuck, man. We're gonna go to C12. I already know how people are gonna fucking think. Yeah. Like, oh fuck, man. They're right? setting us up. They're yeah, doing they're setting us up, right? So lo and behold, they shackle us up. I see a couple of uh, uh, big figures that I know in the game, and uh, they're like, it's all right. They're telling me don't trip. It's cool. You know what I mean? And and don't up worry there, about it, bro. up there, like if you see up there, I've met a lot of people, but up there you don't meet them in person. You hear them from yelling over the wall. You only know what the people in your pod look like. Or if you see somebody through passing along the corridor, going to medical or going back to the block, and you know who that individual is and you know what he looks like, then you know who he is. But other than that, you just think of, you could walk past somebody that's very, very, that's actually somebody and not know who the hell he is. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know what you're doing. So I know a lot of people and I didn't meet these individuals face to face and know what they look like (laughs) until you got out. So I see them and I've already know what these, these people look like. I've already met them prior to this. And I, some of them I live in the pod with and uh, they get there and they're like, it's all right. So I'm like, cool. You know what I mean? Good. So we're walking down. We're walking, sure enough, we're walking to seaside and boom, we bank a left to outside. And sure enough, we're sitting in those holding cells from seven to about one o'clock in the morning, At one o'clock in the morning, they come and get us. They put us on a bus, right? We don't know where we're going. I'm thinking, we're going to Cork and Shoe, right? Because in 2011, on the first hunger strike, they bust a bunch of people down to Cork and Shoe. So we get on the bus. I start seeing these other big figures from these other outfits. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, like, God damn, all right. So it's just me and, a, and I'm going to say regular, couple regular camaradas. You know, just regular. Yeah, yeah you know, everybody else it. is everybody else, you know? So they get on. And uh, on the buses, you know, if you rode at night, they put on the lights for you. The little side lights. Right. Yeah, yeah. They lock the doors to the cages, right? So what they do is they put us all in the back. They take off our leg restraints, and they put us in regular handcuffs. They take off our, our waist restraints while we're getting on the bus, and they handcuff us like this, Damn. like this, right? What the fuck? So, back in the day, the saying in the bay was, when the door cracks, if it's a if it's an op, you handle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let that be the sound of the bell. Let that be the sound of the bell. So at this time, it's a different. It's a different mentality. Everybody has a different mindset during this time when we're getting on this bus. But we're tripping out. And we're like, fuck. Because you guys are basically all integrated together on a bus. Exactly. You but you got I mean? key figures on the yeah. outfits on this so, bus. So this is the time that if you're going to do something. Do it. And it's going to matter. Right? But my and the rest of the homies' priorities are these other individual safety. You feel what I'm saying? My, because, you, because you guys are exactly. on this hunger strike together. Together. So this is the, this is. We're one, all in this one, together. No, this is one of very few times in history. Exactly. That will, when we are all standing on, on this one, together as one. On the one. same line. Pushing and, the same line. And this is what I mean about history. Bro. Yeah. This is a historic story. And if right you here, guys bro. know what I'm talking about, key figures, like key figures of the outfit. Like no names mentioned, but the, they put them all on a close in a close space you know what i'm saying dudes that cdc would say would kill each other on site so to speak yeah right so we're on this bus and we're all in the back and they don't lock the doors they don't do nothing they don't even put a fucking gunner with a gauge like in the they back. use it in the back they don't yeah. put nothing right Ooh. they black out the bus right and i'm tripping i'm like oh bro are they giving you a free fall or what the fuck that's what we're on? thinking i'm thinking all right but but I'm with other people and I'm like, okay, let me see how I could better yet make them more convenient. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm just watching everything, right? And an uh, individual by the name of, he could be mentioned, a black individual. Are you sure? Yeah, by the name of Sidawa, okay. right? Uh, he was a key figure in the hunger strike named Sidawa, a black inmate. He speaks up and you guys, he's like, you guys know what they're trying to do, right? And, you know, Lombo, we're like, yeah. So anyways... They tell us where we're going finally about an hour into the trip. You guys are going to New Folsom. Yeah. So this is an eight-hour bus ride in the middle of the fucking night in the morning. Okay. We've been on the hunger strike for 11 days now. Right. Some of the core uh, f- uh, uh, figures in this are moved to Pelican Bay uh, uh, ASU, uh, Administrative uh, Housing Unit, seg- ADSEG, right? Yeah. Administrative Segregation. 
And it's four individuals, and they're moved over there, and uh, uh, they're there now. The rest of us that went past, I would say, nine days of, of a hunger strike, some of us got redirected. But these in the, the ones that are on the bus, they basically are like, we're getting you out of here. So I'm tired as fuck, right? We go to Pelican. But we end up going to New Folsom. We get there about 6 in the morning, right? It's dewy. And in New Folsom, they got these big-ass fucking geese, bro, about the size of us. <laughs> on the yard i bullshit you not bro and they just wah, wah, and they'll rush you you'll be walking across the yard and handcuffs and these fucking geese you just fuck will just get up and, wah, and just rush you like what the fuck you know you gotta like oh hell no right so all the homies <laughs> are telling me about these geeses i'm like hell no bro get the fuck out yeah get the fuck out of here so we I get off, i ain't getting fucked up by no motherfucker. yeah so there. we get to intake right and uh i knew Folsom on um, br pacifically they have a overflow shoe. It's called a medical shoe, right? And it's B2 and B3 buildings. At the time, it's a running shoe. So to go to that shoe is like fucking, you made it to the lottery, bro. It's like the main line. You ain't slammed down. You got access to the main line. You're cool, bro. It's on, it's, it's a main yeah. line, you know? Yeah. B yard, all that. It's not SNY. It's all that. So we get there and they have this in, in, in a, a, oh, trip on this. So we get there. We're getting off the bus. And a, a, an individual... Is stepping off, an individual stepping off the bus and he fucking snaps his ankle. And he falls and he breaks his fucking ankle, right? And this is a really big figure, right? And uh, <laughs> I just hear him go, ah! And he <laughs> screams, right? And we're all looking like, what the fuck? Even the guard was like, oh my God. And he went to grab him. And his <clears> ankle <throat> was like, boom, popped out, right? Do these individuals get certain uh, 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 treatment by the cops? Yeah. Yeah, they get because better. because the cops are aware of who is who. Yeah, who is who exactly? And they are they know they know their limits, bro. They know who to fuck with and not who how to talk to somebody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, you're you're right on. You're spot on with that. Uh, who they are. So one of those who they are is yeah. ends up breaking his ankle. So we're sitting on the bus for probably like another hour while medicals out there, you know, hustling and bussing. And uh, we get to intake and we're getting clothed and we're thinking, okay, we're gonna go to ASU. And they're like, nah, uh, we're going to put you in B8. Now, that's EOP. For EOPs, that's like the, the, weird, the weird people, the mentally unstable individuals, yeah, the right? Food, the, the, the food jacking off on Yeah, the food jacking on himself. on himself in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in the mirror. Yeah, like those type of dudes. Oh, <laughs> I swear to God, that wasn't me, but yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> I was not your neighbor. Uh, so, so they put us in that. So we're all pissed. We're like, fuck. All right. So they put us all there. And, uh, uh, you know, we put together uh, a 602 because a lot of this, believe it or not, this hunger strike was won on 602s. And, and what a 602 is, is a complaint against the conditions or the rules or the CDC operations that they issue an inmate. So you can 602 anything and say the sergeant calls you a piece of shit. You can 602 that. 602 your punk ass. Yeah, I'm a 602 your I mean, right. a lot of times they don't do shit. But, but they hate the paperwork. Yeah, exactly. So... And that's how a lot of shit is pushed today is 602s. But um, so one individual, the black individual, uh uh, he starts, he's really, really a fucking great lawyer, bro. And uh he's he went to black blackstone, he's a paralegal certif uh certificate, all that certified. I thought you were gonna say he went to a black college, <laughs> like Georgia oh, or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's a good lawyer. He went to a black, he's a black dude, he went to a black college. <laughs> And he loves licorice. And he loves black licorice. <laughs> black licorice. <laughs> I mean, like, what the fuck? No, so, uh, yeah, so this dude puts together 602. And uh, we're down there. So, granted, we can't we can't eat, right? And uh, probably about my 13th day in, I end up fucking falling out. I end up fainting in yeah. my cell, right? And uh, granted, up to that, in, in Folsom, we heard this all the time. And you'd hear a loud against the door. Like, you knew somebody fell out and you called man down. Hey, hey, who stop yelling because you already knew this individual's fucking past. He fainted. Yeah. So I guess I must have made a loud ass sound because I was, I mean, we're all on the door. Like, wait, what happened, dog? See, this is why I hate when I smoke weed and shit. Man. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I always get fucked up. I mean, and lose track of certain things. Like I was there and then all of a sudden I disappeared for half a second. Uh, and then I came back and I was like, whoa, what the fuck did I just miss? Yeah. I don't mean to make it sound like no, 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 that cool. fucked up. Go ahead. But anyways, I thought we were getting off the bus, bro. 
No, and he already then, got off the bus. He broke his ankle. We got housed. Yo, he in B eight in the yeah. EOP with the weirdos okay, okay. jacking off. All right. Now we're housed. See, that's what see, that's why I don't like smoking weed, dog. See, so right now, dog, you legit because I ain't got to do shit. <laughs> but that's why I didn't start smoking weed until right now. <laughs> I don't know. It was like an hour and 45. An hour and 45 because I noticed when I smoke weed, dog, yeah, I lose track. It was tracking me, though. Yeah, and I'll be like, hold on, no, 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 no. And I start noticing, I'm like, well, I'm doing this too much, dog. How am I gonna be a podcast host and keep on forgetting what the fuck the dude's saying? I was forgetting what the fuck I'm saying. No, I wasn't forgetting what they were saying. I was forgetting what you were saying. My train of thought. <laughs> I'm telling the story and I follow it up and I go so far off in the cliff and whatever the fuck. I'll... I got braces, man. That's another thing right now. No, it's okay. It's the first time I eat on a podcast, but I'm I, I swear to God, like. I feel like I'm at the movies right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I swear to God, dog, because, I mean, you paint the picture well, my boy. Thank you. You know what I mean? And that's just to show you love on something that you're strong at. Yeah. Thank you know you. what I mean? Something you're very strong at, my boy, is you're, you're strong at speaking. You're very articulate, my boy. And your picture-perfect memory is fucking amazing, dog. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to butter your biscuits, <laughs> homie. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to put honey in the biscuits, homie. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, the little homie, my boy. Yeah, you know what I mean, you. in regards to like you, my boy JoJo's oh, little brother, dog. You know what I mean? You know, and and, and, and I like it, dog. <laughs> you no, know, it was a trip, bro. Just check it out, dog. Because I'm not the smartest dude, dog, but I love it when I meet a smart motherfucker, nah, dog. And I, and I can hear the dude talk, and I'm like, oh shit! Like I, I just like I'm just like I root for the smart homies, and the homies that aren't smart, it's like, bro, like. Let's get you there, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's you know, you, you know, so it's like you are who you lay with. You are who you, you associate with. You associate with. I'm sorry, who you lay with. Your old lady standing right here. That's the worst thing <laughs> to right. say. It's Your right. lady sitting right here. You are who you lay with. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? What a dick. Huh? That was a dick move right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. That came out wrong. You are who you surround you associate yourself with. You know what I mean? So if you're hanging around with a bunch of dummies, dog, they don't know how to talk and whoop, whoop, you're gonna be like, hey dog, hey dog, hey dog, hey dog, hey dog. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, well, you start hanging out with dudes that are so articulate and shit, and it's like, damn, I want to tell a story, but I ain't gonna tell my story, dog, because it's gonna yeah, sound stupid. Not like no, I don't, oh, I'm not saying it's oh, me. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying though, bro, like it should encourage you to yeah. step your shit up, you know what I mean, and be like, hey, you know what? Yeah, you got everybody. So, you know, once I'm going to tell you something, and I believe this in life totally, uh, a certain individual once told me that the strongest and the most important thing that a person as a human being has in their life is their story. And it can be the most powerfulest platform, message, or you know, life-changing experience that anybody could is hear somebody else's story. And I've heard some powerful stories in my time that I've like I've literally teared up to that I got emotional to. I've heard these stories all my life though. Yeah. Growing up cuz as hard as you think you are as much shit this is what I've learned going through the system. Yeah. In meeting all these crazy individuals, bro. Just when you thought you had it bad, <laughs> somebody else got it better. Someone got it way worse. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Somebody got it way worse, and it blows my mind on some of the stories. I was like, bro, I'm such a little fucking... Mm -hmm. I mean, what the fuck am I tripping on, dog? Yeah, Did I you hear just hear that. what the fuck this boy just said? Yeah, I you know what I mean? Answer. It blows my mind because... So it's so on that note, I don't give a... What I've learned, too, it don't matter how hard you are. Yeah. You're going to find someone that's harder. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Are you gonna find someone that's my willing God, that's willing God. to go that distance? My dad always told me that. He goes, oh. you, know, you think you are there's somebody out there. You might not meet him today, you might not meet him when you're 30, but you're gonna meet him in life, and that person is gonna be way more harder than you. Way more, you know, extreme. that's how I that's how I try to live right now. But back then I didn't live like that. I yeah, felt I like either. I felt like you know what, bro, like the fuck out of here, dog. I tell my wife all the time, you know I tell him I I haven't met that in individual yet, but I know he's out there. And when he's out there and I meet him, I'm gonna get a fucking wake up. So this you know what is mean? what it is, dog. And that's that's I mean, that I don't know if that's a hundred percent uh egotistic of you to say. You know what I mean? You know, I think it is, but it's a hundred percent. If that's how you feel in your heart, then you're being a hundred percent. You yeah. know what I mean? And so when it comes to that, it comes a big ego. So I used to feel like that, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? To a certain extent, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I knew there was harder. And there was, I mean, I have homies from my hood, dog, that have been prime examples of that. Yeah. You know I what I mean? To. You know, and which made me think like, 
competition, not competition, but just this is the uh, this is when we need to be at. But you know what I also learned in that, like the 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 retrospect of that is is seeing that what it takes to be out here to live. That's what makes you hard to be able to survive out here, get up every day. And my wife tells me all the time, nine to five, go to work, make it work out here, because that's easy, bro. I could go to prison. I could live like that the rest of my life. Check it out, my boy. If your parole officer is listening right now, you're saying all the right things. My oh, boy. I know. And, I'm but, doing, but on I'm that, doing good on parole too. <laughs> check it out, my boy. But on that note, you are a hundred percent right. You know the hardest challenge in my life was, bro, making it right here. My hardest challenge in my life, bro, was not the drugs, not addiction to drugs. The lifestyle, dog. Yeah, the lifestyle. I'm I, still addicted. The to lifestyle it, bro. was so hard for me to kick. But you're you're still a little younger, and, yeah. and you've been through a journey where. But I still find your name myself counts. slipping. I I still find myself slipping back and forgetting what's important. You know, bro. It That's might true. not be. It, not, it might not be your time, but hopefully your time comes when it's not too late. You know what I mean? I was fortunate enough to make it till it's not too late. You know what I mean? Late thirties. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because, you know, I mean, I like things, bro. I do, too. So, you know what? My thing, I think what, what kept me going is because I used to fuck with music. So I was like in my head, I was like, man, this jail shit's cool. And I'm about my gangster shit. You know what I mean? But if I do in life in prison, I ain't going to be able to motherfucker do my music shit. So I always like even in prison, I would write shit, dog. You know what I mean? It's not, but I always had something like a dream that I felt like it was still there and I could still get it. Like some cats, if this is all you're living for, then... This is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you have dreams of being bigger and better and live in a certain way, then you have the possibility of a chance to uh, reach those if you have the, you yeah. know what I mean? Everything that it takes, all the tools. There's a lot of tools, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyways, I don't want to flow too far off. Though, but, no. my, but my hardest thing, my boy, was kicking the lifestyle. Dog. Yeah. Because I was about that shit, homie. You know and what I mean? If you're and about that shit, that shit, you just get pumped up. You know what life. I used to do, though? When I pro, homie, I pro to the hood, dog. A lot of cats would be like, oh, my God, get out the hood to do good. I'd be I'll like, homie, back I'm going to pro way. in the hood, homie, and I'm going to show you motherfuckers <laughs> that I can live off pro and be cool and still be right there. But I tried that. But you know what I mean? I, it doesn't always work. No. Nah. But I try to do it, whatever. But anyways, I'm just saying, though, bro, like, the lifestyle was really hard, bro. Um, So you guys are sent to New We're Folsom. New Folsom. That's a, a Sacramento State Prison. And we're there. So, granted, I tell you, I faded, right? They call man down. Well, when I wake up, I'm, I'm strapped to a fucking a chair. I think I told you the story. I'm strapped to the chair in the middle of the day room. And uh, at that time, my fucking luck, the goddamn judge just passed the force feeding law of if an, in the, if an inmate is not eating and... Passes out. Passes out. You basically force feeding. Well, their idea of force feeding an inmate is they get a rudimentary clear seal tube that you would like put in your fucking radiator to fill the goddamn antifreeze up with, right? And they hock this motherfucking tube that's probably about like an, an, an the circumference is probably like an inch circular, probably like fucking two, three huge, inches huge, bro. right? Yeah, it's a fucking so hose. So if you're used to not anything going down your fucking throat bigger than the, the edible shit that you eat. But if you aren't, <laughs> exactly. it ain't no thing. It homie. ain't no thing. You know? Give me but, some more. Yeah. <laughs> so, granted, I'm strapped like this into the thing. And, and uh, when I wake up, I already have the tube in 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 my sarcoph in, in my fucking throat. You sick bastard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when I wake up, I'm like, and I got cotton mouth yeah. because your mouth is open with the tube in there, Ooh. right? So I wake up, I'm fucking freaked out, bro. I don't know where I am. I'm discombobulated. I, I, I'm disoriented. I don't know what the fuck is going on until probably about a minute into it, I finally realize I'm strapped to a fucking chair in the goddamn day room and there's a tube in my throat. Yeah. And there's about four nurses standing right there and there's a dude over me and he has this fucking goddamn uh, funnel, right? And he has a... Uh, uh, like probably four or five insurers in his in in the thing, and I don't know if you guys know what an insurer is, but it's a little canister that you drink for a protein. Yeah. Well, he has that. He also has about three packets of Gatorade, and 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 like this fucking crush. It looked like this crushed up fucking vitamin, right? So he puts all this shit in this fucking funnel, 
And I'm watching this shit, right? But I can't talk because I have this tube in my mouth. So I'm not, uh, like, and I can't move, bro. And I'm, I'm fucking weak. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, def- you know, cut up as it is. But I got skinny. I got real skinny. And, and it took a couple years for my organs and my body to heal after the amount of days I went without food. So granted, when I'm at New Folsom, I have absolutely no food no more. Like I've, I've done, ate my beans. They then found the peanut butter packs. Right. And I got transferred. Yeah. So we're all operating off of no food. What we're fucking doing is we're drinking a gang of fucking coffee, which is not good for you. But it's the only thing you do as a fucking inmate is drink coffee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're ordering off a of commissary fucking coffee. And um, and we're, 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 we're doing that. Right. So granted, I'm, 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 he puts all this shit in this fucking funnel and and it's just like a mixture. And, and, and I don't know if you've done a beer. What is it, a beer bong? Where like, it's, just, it's a shooter straight like that? Well, miraculously, all this fucking shit fits perfectly in this fucking tube, right? <laughs> that is that is this air, aerodynamical to my fucking throat, right? <laughs> and this yeah. shit is just like, boom. like, and, it, and the tube is in my stomach. So what they're doing is they're, they're, they're forcing food into my stomach that has shrunken. I don't know if you guys know, but if you, have, if you don't eat, your stomach literally shrinks. To, to to the size of what you're eating. Yeah. So if you're eating like a fucking almond a day, like you know, some of the, the greatest Buddhists in the world have done this shit to 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 find, you know, Zen and all that, like, you know, to find that shit, they they've starved themselves and only survived off of corn or 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 little peanuts. You know what I'm saying? So your your stomach shrinks. <coughs> so they start pouring this shit in there. So naturally, what the body does when you don't have no food is it regurgitates it. Because you have so much lactic acid built up that it's it's already up here. So whatever's coming down is going to get forced back up. Yeah. But when you have a tube in your fucking throat and you're throwing up, it's not a nice picture. You can't fucking breathe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the same time I'm getting fed, my body's just regurgitating this shit naturally. Like I have no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like shit. I have no control over it. Like I have no bodily control over it, you know? So the tube's probably like, like that, right? To my mouth. I have this open. So the fucking the insure and the vitamins and, and, and the fucking Gatorade that these nutrients that they're trying to fucking bring me back to life with is just is, is going out. Right. So finally, like they 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 they, they the, the fucking doctor sees that I can't fucking breathe. You know what I'm saying? That that it, it, it's it's not helping. So they, they fucking rip the goddamn tube out. Right. There's no grease. There's no you, you, I have no saliva. You know what I'm saying? So it hurts. Like naturally, them forcing it into it when I'm knocked out, they they kind of probably bruise my 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 uh, or sarcophagus, all that shit right there, right? So when they yank it out, I throw up and I'm throwing up on myself, right? And I'm embarrassed. Like you know, there's there's the dudes I came with are on the doors and they can see this shit. You know what I'm saying? And 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 nobody's nobody's uh, uh uh okay with this. You know, everybody's upset with it. And and I don't know if I was like the guinea pig or you know I, I haven't even told my dad. Or my mom, this kind, this story. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's, it's that demeaning as, as as a human being to be treated like that. You know what I'm saying? Like a, like a fucking like I don't know. It was just it was it was it was bad. And um, so anyways, they they throw me back in the cell, right? And uh, all that shit they forced in my stomach. I don't know if you ever shitted and then threw up at the same time, but like that's. You know that, that that's kind of what happened. Like I literally didn't throw up and I'm shitting at the same time, but I literally have to throw up, get up, sit my ass down, and it was like water coming out because I haven't ate. So all these 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 vitamins that they're getting in because I like the body can only take so much. Like the the, the multivitamin that someone takes, all those fucking uh, uh, vitamins and 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 proteins and all that's in there. Your body only takes fifty percent of that, and you piss the rest out. You know what I'm saying? So your body only takes as much as it can take. And whatever else you're trying to force into it, of course, it's going to go through your kidneys or your waste system, you know. So that's what was happening. So I'm not; they're not making me better. They're just they're they're defiling me. You know what I'm saying? And um, after that, like uh, uh, you know, they kind of the rest of the people raised ruckus and and uh, you know, uh, it's a trip, dog. Is did you, did you have the intellect to actually realize that? Yeah, you know, because <laughs> you might have another dude that would have told that same story, bro, and he would have been like. It's such a trip, though. I mean, it's such a fucking trip, dog, to hear you say that, bro. Like, they weren't trying to help me. Nah, 
They were trying to demean me. Yeah, they were fucking me up even more. Yeah, that's what they, they were doing. They well. knew it. They knew. Or maybe, like, maybe. maybe well, how no, about this? What about their ignorance? Maybe the ignorance. Of they're the not people. ignorant because, look, the doctors and the nurses that are hired for CDC are doctors and nurses that either had complaints or got fired from actual positions in hospitals. I want everybody to know that they're listening. The physicians in any fucking prison, whether it be a fucking ER nurse, a uh, uh, MT, a doctor, a fucking dentist. They're the worst motherfucking people in the world because the, the practice that they, they they believed in and took an oath to practice, they couldn't even practice at a top level. So they got to get a job at a fucking prison, bro. You're doing medical work at a prison. Do you really believe that? I really believe that. I've seen documentation of that. I've been yeah. told that, bro. Like these dudes, they have lawsuits on them. They have fucking shit on their jackets that they should not even be practicing medical. Yeah, let me tell you something, dog. It's a trip that you say that, dog, you know what I mean? Because I didn't I didn't know that bit of information. I just thought it was a job that they took, you know what I mean? Some t- some no. of these places, peep game. Some of these places are small towns, bro. Yeah. Maybe you don't want to leave your town. All right, fuck it. I'm going to go work at the prison. But you yeah, know what I mean, when you have multiple doctors. Yeah. at that prison that I get you. come and go. Let me tell you this, bro. So a prison dentist dog gave me a phobia, bro. Mm. Hate to say it, bro, but it is what it is, dog. I was going to this one dentist. I had some fucking cavities. Well, they removed the tooth. In prison? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a they, solution. Yeah. They, it's, it's they won't get no of, filling. Instead of filling the cavity, they removed they the tooth. They yanked it. They yanked the tooth. This yeah, right. happened a couple times, bro. I got a couple t- missing teeth yeah. from them yanking <laughs> a fucking too. cavity. Yeah. Instead of just, like, filling the bitch. And these two procedures happen to happen back to back. Which is a motherfucker. Getting a tooth pulled out is a motherfucker. But yeah. what it was is they would they would numb me. And they would numb it until I felt it squirting out my gums, homie. Yeah. Like, I can feel it in my mouth squirting out my gums. You know what I mean? Like, you've put enough already. You know what I mean? And this numb shit would go from the top of my head. So, mind you, when, like some, a when, stroke. A, when, a, a stroke. when a doctor numbs you, when a dentist numbs you to pull out a tooth, your mouth will be numb. Yeah. That's this it. Location. Not even this side of the jaw will be numb. Mm-hmm. They put it right here, so this side's going to be numb right here. You know what I mean? So what happened is these prison dentists numbed me, and I would feel it to the top of my head, to the bottom of my fucking heart. You they know what I mean? Full of and that shit fucked me up, dog. I, it, it gave me a... It took me a minute, dog, to see dentists out here, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I remember one time they were numbing me, bro, and I caught myself slipping. Because my leg was hanging off the side of the thing, and it looked stressed out if you were a spectator in that fucking dentist's office at the time. My leg was going that way. They're in my mouth. They're doing this and that. And I was actually having a low-key little, uh, you know what I mean, a little anxiety in regards to the past uh, dental ex- uh, ex- yeah. prison experiences I've had, bro. I mean, I caught myself. I'm like, oh, shit. Check myself. I mean, it's not going to be that bad. I mean, yeah. you know. But anyways, so on that note, I believe you, dog. That shit's look on a side note or on a side topic. Little story, I had all four of my wisdom teeth pulled out in Pelican Bay, right? Yeah. So, real quick story. Um, I wake up one morning. Uh, normal, normal symptoms like everybody else probably faces against their wisdom teeth. Your jaw, you wake up, your shit swollen, yeah. right? Uh, beyond proportion, you can't move. It's it's painful. So, what you got to know about prison is that unless it's emergency. Like, you really got to go to man down. They won't see you. So you could put in a medical slip, and you're not going to get seen for about four or five days, right? Unless you basically say you're you're, you're on a scale. So I, I have to show the CO. So I show the CO, and he's like, oh, yeah, fuck, bro. You got to get your wisdom teeth pulled. Or wisdom tooth. Tooth. Let me let me keep that non-plural for the minute. Tooth. <laughs> right? There we go. So I go down there. Right? They cuff me up. Boom. Take me out. Strip me out. And then let me tell you, when you're in prison... Is it's very demeaning. They strip you up butt naked and make you spread your cheeks, cough, weapons for all that shit. So you go through that every time you leave the fucking pot. So you kind of get used to it. So me, I'm 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 very, very well natural, butt naked. You know what I'm saying? You go through the motions. You go through quick. the motions. Before he has to call out what to do, you're already doing it. Exactly. So I'm already there. Boom. We go through it. I go to the medical, right? I go to the dental. It's a little Chinese uh uh Asian, Asian guy, right? And uh the first thing that I know this dude's a fucking He's not a good, like, he should not be here. Is I tell him that it's only my right wisdom tooth, my oh, my upper upper left wisdom tooth. And you could tell that's where the swell, that's where the, the swelling is. That's where it is. So in his mind, 
right? Instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to pull this one wisdom tooth. This dude tells me we got to pull all four. And we're going to do it right now. <laughs> Damn. So if you don't do it, you're going to be in risk of danger. Bro, why is even your dentist fucking story? That's what I'm talking homie? about, right? So I'm like, what the I'm fuck, like, homie? Okay. So I'm like, what is you it mean? you or do you got a black cloud over your head, homie? Trip, trip. Why right? is your dentist stories vicious, bro? This is this is. I used to love. Are you dentist. the type of dude that tries to top the stories no, when you tell a no, story? I swear to God, not because I asked my dad. I used to love the dentist. Yeah. We used to have a dentist right down the street. I used to love getting my. T- I got cavities up the ass, bro. Like I do not want to get my wisdom to. How do you get caught up in this situation? They're gonna pull all they four wisdom. All four wisdom teeth because he says it's better because this one. And eventually, within my lifetime, it's going to happen to this one and this one and this one. So I logically should just get them all pulled right now. Right? That That's the same thought hey, process going through this dude's head. Hey, bro, I'm going to try to, I'm here trying to help you out. Why you got that look in your face? So I'm like, <laughs> damn, right? So I'm like, what do you say to that? Like, right? I was like, all right. So I was like, no, 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 no. He's like, well, if you don't want to, then you could go back right now. And, and I'm doing the accent because that's a little fucking accent he had. Right. So I'm like, what? Right. And the nurse, the nurse is even like, what the fuck did did I just hear? You want to do all four? And she's like looking at me like it's some fucking white old lady. Right. And she's just looking at me like, no, no, that's not right. Right. So I'm like, well, fuck. Like, are you going to I'm in pain. So I'm like, all right, well, fuck it. Maybe maybe if I have him just do the first one, I could just like, you know, tell him stop on the last ones. Like, I don't need the other ones. Like, fucking I'm done. Right? Set him up. Set me up. So this fool put me on Novocaine and put me on, on, on fucking gas and knocked me the fuck out. <laughs> Damn. Me the, I swear to God, God, bro. I swear to God. Knocked me the fuck out, right? <laughs> the, 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 the whole process was like an hour, right? Uh, it took an hour. What a right? dick, dog. So I wake up. I wake up, right? And, and, and You wake up and you got three teeth. And right? I, like, right. I got a horrific scene in front of me. <laughs> this dude's got my wisdom tooth because, you know, they break off. Right, he's, he's laying on the sofa like, ah. yeah. I'm like this, and you know, the, you know, they put the tray right here, and you're looking up in the light like you see God, right? Like when you wake up, you're like, oh shit, like the light, the bright light, right? And I get up, and you got the little thing right here, but granted, I'm handcuffed, right? Yeah, yeah. And I wake up, and I lick the thing, and I got all four of my wisdom teeth in in little chunks, pieces right there, and bloody gums, all that shit's right there to see, right? And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, like, what the fuck? And this, I got gods poked in, but that was a little story. And, and and granted, for the pain, you know as well as I do, they only give you ibuprofen. Yeah. That is it. So nobody gets to go to the fucking store and get Tylenol 3s or, or go to the fucking thing and get Oxycontin or whatever payment. You get fucking ibuprofen and you stuff your ass full of nine pills so the pain will go away. And that's that's that was, that was my little side topic. Sorry about that. They give you a little motherfucking Ziploc. Yeah, little, your little zip like whoop with your little name on that bitch. <laughs> on me, you know? Yeah, you're, you're, you're just chopping down yeah. fucking ibuprofen till you feel better. Yeah, you're like, oh, I ain't there yet. Hey, homie, what the motherfucking hair went out? You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny though? In, in prison, no matter what, dog, you can have a cut, a headache, a stomach ache. Ibuprofen. You tell somebody, dog. You tell somebody, homies pop out with bags of that shit. Hey, bro, I got some ibuprofen. Oh, bro, I got some. Uh, uh what were those shits? Narotins. I got some monos. You know what I'm saying? They got all kinds of pills for fucking pain. You know what I mean? But the, yeah. the common one is ibuprofen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was a little side story. All right. So yeah. let's finish off. Okay, yeah, so back to the hunger strike. Yeah, so we're in, we're in Folsom. I go through that. I wake up. They put me back in my cell. Um, so a couple of the figures that were there get at get at the, the warden. The warden comes and talks to us. And uh, basically, he's like, what the fuck you guys want? Because now we're getting media attention, right? We're getting, uh, 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 like I said, we're getting ABC News. We're getting coverage all the way in New York. We're getting coverage all the way in Europe. Like they're they're actually talking about Pelican Bay specifically. Yeah. And um, locally, we're getting tons of it. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, you got families out there with with you know pictures of, of the inmate, and you know, been back there so many years with the whoop and yeah. all this other shit, right? So they uh, they agree, and uh, we're talking about it because one of our main thing was. To cook our soups and eat our food in, we got little uh, 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 styrofoam containers, right? We wanted bowls. We wanted bowls to eat our soup in like a normal human being. 
And uh, we wanted plastic bags to put our chips in so they wouldn't get stale because they'd give us paper bags. And within a couple of hours, your your, your, your chips are chips stale. Chips are done, dog. Chips yeah. are done, bro. You know, we wanted a variety like fish and uh, things on the commissary. We wanted uh, regular soups. You know, we wanted good pricing. We wanted uh, Folgers coffee. We wanted everything that we that you got on the main line in your bottles, your shampoos, your everything. We wanted it in the shoe. That's it. That's all we asked for. Basic necessities to make us live a little bit better. Because the idea of Pelican Bay Shoe specifically was to break someone, was to break us. So whoever went there, went there specifically for gang activity, and it was meant to break them. It was meant to break their soul, break their human. And there's there's plenty, of, if anybody listening wants to research, go back on Pelican Bay and, and look at all the, the horrific and draconian actions that they put through inmates in the early 90s going through this shit. they used to put inmates in boiling hot water extract information they used to do all kinds of shit and and there was a saying up there a long time that you either you died or you debriefed up there and you know those that are not willing to debrief we you died up there and you know a lot of people died and and um so basically all of us were fighting and doing this hunger strike for something that we believed in because a couple inmates that i i well one i knew he ended up uh, uh, dying over there, star starving, starvation. And um, shout out to Weto from South Sarriva, rest in peace. Um, he died in Corcoran Shoe. But um, and uh, by also from Watts from Grape Street, rest in peace to him. But they they all died for this shit. And uh, during that time, I was all for it. I was for that shit because I honestly thought I was gonna get out in 2018. I honestly thought I was gonna parole from the shoe. You know, what I mean that date to me wasn't it wasn't far off, but it wasn't realistic at the same time either. Because what I was striving for to become in prison, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. it wasn't something that I really looked into it because I had a, a what you would describe as a life or mentality, or how would you say like you, you know I did already at that time in Pelican Bay. I was I was probably about ten years in, or about yeah about yeah almost about ten years in by the time we got got out, and um, and it didn't feel like nothing, but it already felt like you know. 10 years is 10 years, bro. I don't know if anybody can picture a fucking decade, but it's a long time. And um, so I thought I was going to parole from there. And I didn't really think this, the, the, the value and effort that we were putting, you know, our soul and, and sweat and blood and, and life into was actually going to amount to anything other than getting the couple commissary items we wanted, longer visits, shit like that. And um, so when little things started trickling down from Sacramento, we started getting containers. Uh, granted, uh, uh, after New Folsom, they transferred us back to Pelican Bay. And I did uh, about three days in the hole. And uh, they put us where a couple other key figures were from from uh, the outfit. And, and uh, this is about the 23rd day in, about 23 days into the summer strike. And um, I haven't ate people. Now I'm off of water. I fell out probably about two more times after this. And um, so they give me... <laughs> Fuck! I didn't tell you They get me into the hole, and um, they send me back to my cell. And granted, I told you I'm set up with this this person, right? Well, he's not there. So, lo and behold, they ship him out somewhere else, and uh, I get back to the cell. So I'm in the short corridor, and I'm back, and um, I'm like, "Fuck! I'm I'm like bones, bro. Like I'm going through it." And luckily, I land in the pod, and uh, the neighbor that. He he's a uh he was an Asian homie, he was he was Asian, yeah. but he was a homie. All right. And uh, he's diabetic, so he had he had a uh, 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 heart palpitations. But he was he was diabetic. But he also had heart palpitations. Yeah. So the the rhythmic beat of his heart was off or something. But he couldn't go on the hunger strike. Bottom line, he couldn't go on the hunger strike. So he would eat every day. So when he see me come in the thing, he was like, "Fuck me on," and he was like, "Here," and he, you know, gave me food and shit those sandwiches and I couldn't eat. Like you think it's easy. Like you, you think like in my mind, I'm looking at that food. Like I'm about to take you the fuck down. But when I get into my mouth, my body's rejecting it because I haven't ate so long. You know what I'm saying? So what's going down is coming right back up. I can't keep it down. And that's what you got to learn when you starve yourself, like your, your body, my body was affected for a long time. It took my body to get back to normal. And I still have like the way I, I, I go, I use a restroom. It's, it's it's still like a little different because I, I think it's because of that honestly because of what I put my I put myself through forty eight days of not eating so 
we go through that shit. And um, granted, I'm I'm trying to go all out, right? I'm trying to prove the point. I'm trying to do all that shit. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to fucking show these men what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for the individual that are in my pod. That goes for, like I said, I had to self-analyze myself and show them. Because, you know, actions speak louder than words, bro. And, and, you know, you could be the biggest, baddest motherfucker talk about yourself all you want. But the way you carry yourself and display yourself is really going to resonate with that certain person. So if you go through the struggle with that show them, you show them your metal and what you're worth and what you could go through, not even mentally, but physically, what you can put your body through, it really sends a message to people. You know what I mean? It, it sends a message that you're really serious about what you're talking about. You're not just practicing. You're not just preaching, but you're practicing what you preach. You know what I'm saying? And I used to go about these individuals and talk to these older these older men like I used to know what I was talking about, their life. And it didn't dawn on me until I had to tell myself to shut up instead of talking and listen to what the fuck you're telling me and their story and their life. And, and it would basically end up culminating into what I'm trying to tell them. But my view, you know what I'm saying? So that goes back to that. And um, yeah, so on the 48th day, I'm like fucking, I'm surviving, right? Um, CDC called my parents, my mom and then Georgie and my dad and told them that I got off the hunger strike in the 12th day, right? So I'm just in my cell fucking fine. But I'm I'm, I'm really pushing going. I'm going through it with people. And um, and uh, finally we get word that, uh, and, and, and granted, whatever you guys hear, the popular belief, this was all by choice. It was voluntary. So anybody who participated participated in the hunger strike, voluntarily did it. Voluntarily did it. Okay, it wasn't you had to do it because you're part of a, a gang, or you're part of the prison gang, or something like that. No, nah, you were you were given a choice. You were asked, do you want to or you don't. Well, and it, what was the percentage of di- did and didn't? Okay, so the percentage was, I, I, I mean the percentage in the homies. Okay, the, the, uh, let, me, let me break it down like this. No, this as far as homies, I don't, I don't care about the other. Races. I know. Okay, as far as homies <laughs> like this, uh, you were asked to at least give five days, right? And then after that, you go off. So certain individuals gave out nine. Now, like I said, I wanted to go extreme because I had something to prove. You know what I'm saying? So I went a little bit longer, but the but the average went about nine, ten, twelve days. Uh. After the threat, the initial threat of getting moved to C12 or getting you're, moved around. Your motherfucking ass went 48 days, huh? Yeah. Is that what she said, 48 days? Yeah. Well, no bullshit. Documented. You guys can look that motherfucker up. Yeah. And, um, but like I said, I was surviving. I was eating here and there. Like eventually in that pod, they weren't fucking with us no more. And a lot of shit was coming through for us. We were getting a lot of, a lot of Pacific media coverage from the governor, from Brown. And a lot of fucking uh, uh, politicians, especially congresswomen and senators like uh, uh, Feinstein, actually championed our cause. And it actually got to the levels where we needed it. And, and, and we were hoping it got to the presidency, but it didn't. But it got to the national things where people were listening to what was happening to us. And, um, and what I say, when I say us is because I actually went... I, and I'm not I'm not putting down anybody who got up there late and did like a couple years in Pelican Bay Shoe because you went through the same struggle I did. But when I when I refer to us, I'm just talking about that did time, that did years, amount of years in there. And and it was actually happening for us. So when we got word that go ahead, get off the hunger strike, I got off. And uh and uh they they documented it that you're off. Um one of the certain individuals uh, he ended up going the whole time, fifty-two days. Went fifty-two days, and um, and was that because he felt like he had to? He was the core figure. He was the voice piece. For yeah. All of us. So he, so nobody was gonna outlast him underneath no. him. For those who are listening, um, that were during that time, hearing all that, the the certain name that you would see on there, and the certain person that I'm talking about, you'll know exactly what I'm talking. About. He's the voice piece for everything, for our, for yeah. us. For yeah, the yeah, no, hundred percent, I get it. So he was the he was the the plaque. Yeah, yeah. No, you I get it, saying? bro. I get it. So n- nobody was going to outlast him. No, no. He went the whole time. And um, 
that man is fucking uh that man is he's amazing but uh so after that um like everything stops coming through litigation everything starts coming to the courts uh we won the case on brown we made up winning the case and um we're starting getting lawyers uh and uh shout out to ann wells uh charles carbone uh lawyers that helped us in this hunger strike um they start coming and seeing us and out of the the individuals that that were documented as being a decade or more in pelican bay they had visited there was probably about 30 of us that had been there like i told you i fell right in between the cat because i was about nine and a half years so they just kind of brushed me over and um they car they start come seeing us and we're starting we start hearing these rumors about the step down something called the step down program yeah and we're uh we're getting little memos, little uh, 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 like documented prison issues from the warden and, and state of Sacramento, and and um, we're getting these things, and they're 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 giving a lot of a lot of us hope and promises, and and they're doing like a uh, random things like drilling holes into the holding cell that looks like it's gonna put a phone there, and they're giving us these little clues, like little bits of like you know trying to fuck with. Like, that's what it's all mind warfare up there, and uh. So it's sparking this, 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 this topic among all inmates, and, and we're just consumed with this, this reform of of how we're going to change our environment, of how we're going to be at the 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 point and center of everything that's going to trickle down the trickle effect that this is going to have for the prison system. Let me get one more. Yeah, it's going to have for the prison system. So at the same time, we're also coming up with these at the time there were their fantasies of of what we're gonna do when we get back out on the mainland. Yeah. And it's gonna be our time. And uh for those that are listening, you guys know what I mean by our time. And um so we're just we're doing all these things and I'm I'm really getting heavy into this the this, this legal shit. And I'm trying to break down these cases and I'm trying to learn because I'm understanding or coming to understand that this is how you move the chess pieces on the CDC's prison board, on how you make actual moves from a prisoner standpoint to make differences and changes within your environment. Legally. Legally. Not and that's what matters, finally, these lawsuits. Not, not, not necessarily physically. Not physically. Phys violence violence is, is, is necessary only when it's necessary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Other yeah. than that, it's it's no need to be. This is prison, you know. It's 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 nothing to be glorified, but it's something that that a lot of people respect in our lifestyle. And but it's its own world. There's a salute. There's a thirty four prisons in the state of California. There's seven one eighties, right? And uh, think about that. We are the highest. You know, not to not to sound. And 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 uh, uh, like everybody else sounds and you know gives statistics and all that, but we as California are the leading state that has the most prisons in in the world in one fucking land, you know what I mean? And 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 they're still building more, and they're still building county jails and all this other shit. And so at the time, I'm I'm all for this shit. I'm like fuck yeah, you know what I mean? And I'm seeing it coming down. So they introduced this step down program. And uh, did we already salute? Yes, you already sir. dang my bad. All good, brother. And they start breaking down this uh how do I say this um this concept of five steps that you transgress into the main line. And with each step comes benefits and um you get extra how do I say necessities or yeah, necessities to prison. Like you get extra packages. Yeah, privileges. Privileges, there you go. Better better word put, yeah. Privileges. But nobody's liking this because we're like, fuck no. We done did a gang time. What the fuck we need to step down for? We haven't had a 115 in so many years. And uh uh the fuck we need this for. You know what I mean? But but it's 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 a start. It's 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 a foundation. So the communication starts picking up, right? And um this is 2014. I'm I'm back settled with this individual, and uh I'm on I'm on a certain path and uh, we're just, I'm just bettering myself at the time. 
2015 comes along, right? And at the time you had um, uh, Prop 47 pass. So a lot of people that were back there for stolen property that was under $900 was considered a misdemeanor. Yeah. So they're getting let out. So you got certain people getting let out. So that's a plus two because SB or Prop 47 got enacted by us. We pushed it through the ballot. And um, 2015 rolls along. In about July. It's about three years to the anniversary of the hunger strike. No, about two years. I'm sorry. Two years to the anniversary of the hunger strike, 2015. And my celly goes to medical one day. And uh, he never comes back. And this is a certain person. And uh, I had a lot of love for him. And so this is the dude you were talking about the whole time. Yeah. Right. And uh, you, you won't be, those who are listening probably know. But um, it broke, it, it broke, it broke me. It broke me because I've seen a lot of people check in. I've seen a lot of hardcore motherfuckers talk the talk, walk the walk. And then some of them, you know, they check in because they're tired. I get it. Whatever. You know, that's your choice. Some check in for drugs. Some check in because they just can't hang. I, I get it. Like you've been down 40 years. You just don't give a fuck. You want to live. Okay, whatever. You check in. You want to get out the cell. What? Yeah. You check in, bro. I, I get it. I don't. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Door opens, handle business. Other than that, I got held in against you, bro. But when you see someone at that stature do that, it's like your whole your whole structure just breaks. It fails. And you question everything. Of what you believe in. Of what you believe in. And what you've been standing by. And what you've been standing by. What you've been living for, sacrificing for. Exactly. So he ends up leaving. And... uh that whole day is like a, it was just like a fucked up day, right? And um, finally, like later on that day, we get confirmation. Yeah, he's not coming back. So we know where he's at. And um, the triple, the effects of that is everybody's asking me, why? Why do you do it? You should know why. He was your celly. Why? 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 Like, why? Like, why? like you know something. Like I know something. I had an idea, but it's none of my business. I'm nobody to speak on that man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Still to this day, I'm nobody to speak on that man. He, he made his choice and that's what it is. But that comes the question. Why? And You know, they're asking me. I'm like, I don't know. And nobody wants to hear that. Nobody gives a fuck if I don't know. <laughs> they want to know why. And they're sure as hell that I know why. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're not polite. They're not you know, uh, gentle about the way they ask or the way they carry themselves because they are who they are and you're not going to tell them different. So when they approach you and, you know, you don't give them the right answer, sometimes they're going to get a little, you know, and they get at you that, that way. So it's like that comes with that. So I went through that. And um, and uh, like towards the beginning or maybe like that happened in July, so about September, Around Thanksgiving, my dad comes up to see me. My dad came up to see me every year. Thanksgiving week, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he was there. Like my dad, shout out to my dad and Jordy. Every fucking Thanksgiving when I was in Pelican Bay, they came. So I had that to look forward to. Never doubted that. So uh, that comes, Thanksgiving. And uh, I see them. It's a good visit. They bring my son that year. And uh, I get to see him. And... Um, it's a good visit, you know, we're talking and, and you know, it's always hard, but you know, you always got to be strong. You always got to be strong for them. It's not, it's not strong for yourself. You know what I mean? You got to be strong for them and they got to be strong for you. So it's like, you know, you want to tell your parents as much as you can without lying to them, but you want to, you want to lie to them to keep them safe. You know, keep them okay. Cause you know, you don't, you don't want them to know what, you know, they, they don't even know what I'm going through until right now if they're watching, you know what I'm saying? But you don't want them to know what you go through in there. You don't want your family to be affected. Because I don't know if you guys know that if somebody's doing time and you have a family that's looking out for you to believe them, they're, they're doing the time with you, bro. They're doing the time right with you. All them visits, all that cash is coming in for the commissary, all the money on your books and all that shit, bro. That's time they're taking out of their fucking day of 24 hours living in the real world that they're dedicating to you. And the world we live in, 24 hours to us ain't shit. I could do them. My, my, my 24 hours is the same every fucking day. You know what I mean? And for them, they got work. They got bills. They got family. They got their own emotions. They got their own life that they got to go through. And they dedicate that shit to you. 
So for, for people that have done time, just remember, you go back, your family's doing that time with you. Whoever's holding you down is doing that time with you. So you got to be strong for them. And, and you know, I used to put on a good face and a good, and a good you know, good, good, it's okay. But, you know, inside, I'm like, I'm going through it, bro. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm fucking, I'm, I don't know if you ever know what it's like to have an anxiety attack, but I've had those, like. Yeah, 100%. Like, you know, you can't breathe. You feel like you're going to die. You want to shock. And and I had a couple of those. And that's just because, you know, you go the stress. Like, my hair, my hair turned gray in the bay, dog. So check it out real quick, Doug. When I when I did that intro, I was doing that intro of feelings that I've had in the past, dog. Yeah. So if you talk about anxiety attacks, I used to have them in my sleep, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I would get up in the middle of my um, night in my sleep, bro. And I jump up and with two hands, homie. Like I've had several cellies tell me that I do this, dog. Yeah. I don't even remember. I, I sometimes I remember it in a dream, dog, but I remember, but I'll get up fucking crazy as fuck and be like, fuck. Oh! And I fucking several cellies, three cellies have told me, dog, that I'll go up to the fucking uh, uh cell door and I'll fucking pop. Oh yeah, bang it, huh? Yeah, you know I mean yeah. I'll pop it in the middle of the night. Yeah, dog. The night terrors. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, and 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 then I fucking lay down and go back to sleep. Well, have you ever had the ones where like say your your wife like shakes you up and wake and you fucking jump. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good, though. You jump up, like yeah. you're gonna fucking, you don't know who it is, or you fucking grab them real tight. Yeah, you're flexing up. Yeah, yeah but, but they're, you're, it's just natural. But it's your wife, like just waking you up out of sleep, like, hey, baby, you know, or just, just, just for a fun fact, real quick, I heard you got a certain like grace period, like when uh, right. you get woken up and say you crack the individual. <laughs> Like you have a grace period. If it happened within a few, like within a few seconds, you were still half. You were still, still asleep. asleep. You're and still you, good. And you really can't get charged for that shit. Uh, you you good. You good. Uh, but anyways, uh, shout out to my girl. Don't be waking me up, girl. Uh, <laughs> my wife right here. Pop! <laughs> Remember last week? <laughs> but yeah, bro. Fucking. Um... So yeah. So let's 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 get let's finish this off. Bro. Okay. So uh, at about 2015, like I said. Okay. So November they come and see me. Yeah, we're about almost done. With Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. They come yeah. and see me. So they leave, right? Uh, and it was like fucking Christmas present. December 6th, I get a paper. I'm going to committee. Okay? And uh, so December 2nd comes. And um, something trickles through the grapevine. A very uh, high, in the high figure gets kicked out to the main line. The first of us. Yeah. Right? Gets first, kicked out to the main the line. The first of... Of seeing uh, something results. come back from the results, results from the hunger strike, right? So he gets kicked out to New Folsom, and you guys are blown out. Blown We're out. like, no way, yeah, right? Because okay, so this is how it starts, bro. They say word to us, "Hey, is this individual over there with you?" Right, and uh, we send word back, "No." Okay, is this individual over here? No. Send word to Seaside. Is this individual over here? No. Boom. Send word to Cork and Shoot. Is this individual over here? No. Boom. Send word to Tashby. No. Okay. Boom. By that time, all that mess is going back. There's already been a message sent back. I'm right here. This is where I'm at. I'm out. This is what happened. Boom. It's working. Get ready. We're all getting let out. Yeah. They put him on a on a main line on C yard on a 180, right? When he hit that motherfucking yard, individuals are like, whoa. Like they've never seen one in their whole motherfucking life. Yeah. You know what I mean? They've only heard the mysticism of this shit. Yeah. To see one, to see one, it's either they meet your expectations or they don't. But to see one and be like, wow. You know what I mean? This dude's walking the main line. Walking the main line. Yeah. So I hear this. I'm like, fuck yeah. December 6th comes out. They tell me, okay, we're going to endorse you to Sentinella, C, uh, uh, 270. How do you feel about this? Can you go? Do you have any safety concerns? Do you have any uh, security risks? No, no, no. Yes, I could go. Okay, fine. Boom. You're December going 6th. no matter what. Yeah, no matter what. Whatever. Right? If there's safety concerns, then you're going no matter what. Two weeks later, uh, uh, it's December 23rd. Uh, I transpack, right? With a layover, a five-day layover in New Folsom. So I transpack on the 23rd. I, I believe it's a Thursday. Christmas. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's a it's a it's a Saturday. Christmas is that following Monday, right? Because it's a holiday. Because that's why we're staying over in in fucking New Folsom. Yeah. So, boom, they transpack me. I'm like, damn, this is happening, right? <laughs> when they come and transpack me, they put in a phone, 
into the fucking holding cell. Okay. Okay. You're putting a phone. Pass up on you. Yeah. Forward. Into the holding cell. So I call my dad. First phone call I get. No. I call him. I tell, hey, I'm getting out. Right. And um, like when I get nervous, I have this thing. I, I laugh or I smile a lot, and it, it pisses people off. Like. Like you could be telling me something. Serious. Are you like? Have you seen the new Joker movie? Yeah. Okay. Sort of like that, but like if you're telling me something serious, yeah, and I feel nervous about it, I'll laugh or I'll smile at you, yeah. and people take that in the wrong way. But it's yeah. like a, a mechanism that I have that I just do. It's an instinct. It's yeah. instinctly done. Yeah. So I'm. So when you laugh at you in your head, you're like, "Oh shit, mm-hmm. that's funny, though." I know cats like that, bro. So he's telling me this, and he's like, "Well, Michael." I love you and I care for you. You're gonna be all right, and I'm laughing at him. I'm like, ha ha, yeah, now I'm gonna be fucking fine. Like, but the same, yeah, the fuck up. he's losing it. He's yeah. like, oh, you're not taking me serious. What the fuck? Like, oh, okay, you want to fucking laugh at me? I'm like, dad, no. I like, to this day, I tell her that shit. My wife, right here, I laugh, and she gets fucking pissed. <laughs> and if you guys don't see me, she's looking at me like evil eyed right now. Yeah, but she's got she gets pissed. A, she's got a gun in her hand too. I don't mm. know what that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Say one more thing. <laughs> so, um, anyways, yeah. So we get the phone call. They transact me the following week. I uh, uh, that Sunday night, I leave. Yeah, I get to New Folsom on uh, uh Christmas Day, Christmas morning. And, and me, when I'm in prison, I'm all about the holidays, bro. I love it. I watch all the fucking Lifetime movies, all the holiday movies, bro. All this fucking corny ass. Family round the campfire, fucking Christmas tree. Whoa, you ain't got nothing else better to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no other choice. I can watch some cheesy ass shit. But I watch some. I'm all into that, bro. Are you watching them out here? I watch them out here. I get into the spirit, dude. Like I get like like. Oh, like I'll give you that real quick. I used to make burritos every Christmas, and I used to price them out like presents. I used to wrap them up, bro, draw on them, hand them to the homies. Like I, I was like that. But I get all like goofy around the holidays, bro, because I like that shit because. The holidays speaks family to me. You know yeah. what I mean? And all the good memories I have are during the holidays with all my family. So you, you know? got you got good memories. I yeah. got good memories yeah. and they they okay. all they all revolve around the holidays. So I get really I get really into the holidays. You get festive. Yeah, I get very festive. So we get to do Folsom. And we're gonna say that in the most gangster way. <laughs> the most gangster ass way. I get festive. I get festive, bro. So we get to do Folsom. I'm uh, I'm laid over there five days. Um uh Right there, we don't got no TV, we don't got a property, nothing. But we're on the main line. So we're getting fucking comments there. All the homies are like, oh shit, you came from the bay. Hell yeah, fool. And a couple of homies that are already there in the bay you know, that got kicked out to right there. They come see us, bring us TVs and all that shit, right? So we're set. So the fifth day comes and uh, we're going to fucking Sentinella. So I trans back again. Boom, we hop on the bus. I lay over in New Delano one day. I get to Sentinella. So um, finally, when I get to Sentinella, I'm in the holy cell. And I uh, came down with like nine people. Again, nine people. And uh, we're all validated, all kicked out from the shoe. And we're all talking about what we're gonna do, you know, how's it gonna be, all the visits, and you know, all the all the you know, the cell phones. I'm gonna get married, the, dog. Get married, all that <laughs> shit, right? I'm gonna get them conjugals. <laughs> so um we get down there and uh uh everybody that prison, I swear to God, man, there was like fucking Half a Pelican Bay in that fucking that whole prison was fucking Pelican Bay shoe, like the whole fucking yard. And there's only one bad yard in that prison. It so was that, D yard. Does that make that good or bad? That makes that good, bro. Like yeah. we own that. Like that shit was the shit. Yeah. Like, we had everything we wanted, and it was it was lovely. It was lovely. We, we had a lot of people, a lot of people there. For those listening, like you know who that is, a lot of people, and um, it was lovely. Like you know, shout out to Animal that's there right now on the yard. Hey, ch- hey, check it out, my boy. So before we started this podcast, my boy, yeah. you know what I mean, so I met you, at, I met you as my, my my boy's little brother. Yeah, you know what I mean, and, and me and my boy, we peers. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. you know, um, and so I met you as a little brother. So I was like, he, he's like, hey, look, fucking meet my little brother, dog. Ooh, whoop, you know what I mean? He's, he's good people, and I I really want you guys to connect. I want you guys to meet and this and you know because. We love each other, dog. Yeah. As homies, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he told me a lot of good things. I mean, like we're boys, dog. You know what I mean? And so I was like, all right, bro. You know what I mean, little brother? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what I mean? And you, I mean, I, I hear about. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm not. 
you know, I'm not new to the game, dog. No, I, I hear yeah. I hear about a lot of different cats and, you know, like we've all been through our things and shit like that. You know what I mean? But once I'm, so anyways, I'm going to get to once I met you. But so as I sit here and hear you tell your stories, bro, man, I swear <laughs> to God, I just look at you a little bit different, dog. Thank you. you know what I mean? Like through these we're at an hour, three hours and 15 minutes. We've been sitting right here talking, bro. Yeah, for real. You know what I mean? So through, so through these three hours and 15 minutes, my boy, you know what I mean? It has painted a fucking amazing fucking picture, bro. You know what I mean? And as you, the more you went on in your story, my boy, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not looking at the little brother no more. I'm looking at a fucking grown fucking man. man. <laughs> thank you. You feel what I'm saying, yeah, though, dog? I feel you. Thank and you. that's 100%, my boy. Thank you. That's just to be real with you, dog. You know what I mean? When we were chilling and the other day and we were posted up, watching the fights and like that, I'm like, I saw homie little brother right there. That's what's up. You know what I mean? Thank you. You know, and after we... So that's, that's what's so important about this platform is telling these stories yeah. and, and getting to know each other, getting to know the lifestyle, bro. You have a fucking... Academy Award winning fucking story, my boy. <laughs> is that Academy Award? Is that yeah, yeah, Academy shit? Award winning, yeah. Yeah, bro. You have oh, this story that you sat here and so precisely articulated, my boy. Thank Dog, you. this was a fucking badass podcast. <laughs> yeah. This was a badass podcast, dog. Thank you. I really, I enjoy them all, bro, on their own levels, dog. Yeah. But this right here, you know what I mean? Maybe just because I know the background. I yeah. know a little bit of the fucking uh, stomping grounds. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you do. You know, um, it, it, it intrigues me more. My homeboy Smiley said, look, why are you so quiet? Cause I always talk shit, dog. I talk <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's different. He doesn't know because he's not sitting behind his mic. But when I sit behind his mic and I have another individual sitting across from me, they bring different things to the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you most definitely carried these three hours and six hours. <laughs> I knew it was that long, with, bro. With some motherfucking, <laughs> with some content, some Thank amazing you. content, my boy. Thank you. I think this podcast right here, bro, is going to, um, I really feel like it's going to open some doors for you, though. I, hope it does. I really I feel like some light on that shit. I really, really feel like this podcast right here, my boy, is just the beginning of another chapter in your life. Yeah, it is. Life's about chapters, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get too hung up on past chapters. Mm -hmm. Respect them. Love them. You know what I mean? But always elevate yourself. And just because you elevate yourself doesn't necessarily mean you can't bring those people from the other chapters with you. Yeah, that's true. Because I'm always trying to uplift people, bro. You know what I mean? Not that I'm saying I'm above people, but I've been working hard at trying to elevate myself. Yeah. So I like to give myself a little bit of something, you know what I mean? But I'm always trying to like reach out to homies coming out the pan. I try to get you a job, bro. Like I just do little things. I'm not trying to fucking pat myself in the back, but I really make an effort, dog, oh, yeah. to help out people that I've been in that position mm -hmm. of coming out and being so vulnerable to the real world after being so, um, you know what I mean? Like you said, like your stories, bro. Like, them trying to demean you and trying yeah. to make you less of a human being, bro. That's what they were trying. That's what I think they were trying to do, honestly. And it did. It did. It worked. But I mean, you got it's like a wall, bro. You got to conquer yourself back, like to to sit there and and let yourself be subjected to that to that type of of inhumane defileness. It's is wrong, and, and and a lot of people don't see this. They don't hear it, or if they see it. In prison, they only see the, the aspect of the mentally ill. And that's what CDC or any type of prison likes to show is the mentally ill. But they don't understand what, what the actual person that's struggling with the mental fortitude goes through to make it out there to be insane, to still have intact the, the morality that you went in with. You know what I'm saying? Not to be what they call institutionalized, but to come out with the same morality of 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 respect and consideration and, and treat a human being like you want to be treated instead of being like i'm this big bad motherfucker that's been in prison or you know because human society really doesn't give a fuck about prison bro like like the, the real world out here don't give a shit what i what i've been through they don't care who i am in there or they don't care who i am out here. they don't they don't give a shit about that that's not gonna give me a fucking job that's not gonna get me fucking hired you know what i mean like like my name like if i go mention my name in my neighborhood it's not gonna give me a fucking job you want, let me tell you one more thing before we fucking end this podcast, big dog. 
I told you the hardest thing was for me to kick the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The second hardest thing for me was to come into a world, big dog, and understand that I am not shit. Exactly. You know what I mean, I am not shit. It was the most humblingest thing I ever did in my life, it's gonna bro. Take time From, to make so the problem with a lot of my boys have, because my boys, you know what I mean? Some of my boys, they fucking, they fucking animals, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so what my boys have a problem with is they get out of the feds, they get out of the state, and you're the big dog in the hood. You're the big dog in the pen, but in the real world, no you're way. minimum wage, homie. Exactly. You're $12, you know $15 I mean? an hour, bro. That's the hardest fucking thing to get into a position. You got some little short motherfucker that's way out of shape, and he and he's fucking your boss. He's telling you every day what the fuck to and do then and how like to us, fucking do it. Tad it up, they're going to yeah. talk to you even worse because they think they know you've been in the pen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to demean you even more. But yeah. Hey, but check it out, my boy. Hey. Thank you for uh, thank you for having coming me. on this podcast, my boy. I love the story. Anything you want to give on the way out, dog? Um, you know what I mean, shout out to you, to Lucky. Thank you for having me on here. Shout out to my mom, my dad, my brother, everybody who's listening. Thank you. If you guys want to hit me up, uh, get it, Lucky. All that. Uh, anybody has any questions on solitary confinement? Any eight um, outfits, organizations? Wants to know what I'm going through? Just hit me up. Get at me one way or another. Um, I yeah, I appreciate you guys listening to my story. Shout out to my wife, to uh, with Dancia Memo. Yeah, go ahead and give your. Oh yeah, uh, uh, if you want to hit me up, hit me up on Instagram at uh, True Blue Seven Two Nine. Yeah, True Blue. I don't even know my own shit. <laughs> True Blue Seven Two Nine. Hit me up right there. Uh, uh, come follow me. Like I said, any uh, organizations on Star Second Fire, hit me up and I appreciate it again, my boy Lucky. Shout out. Off the rip, my boy. Thank you so much for being on, my boy. Hey, thank you to all this, uh, everyone that's been on, that's been hanging with us, all the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you share this when we, uh, uh, you know what I mean, when I when I release this right now. And much love, much respect. This was a badass podcast. Everybody give it up for Shooter. One more time. One more time. Shout out to uh, all my homies in Paris, uh, Blackie, Camilo, uh, rest in peace, Curly. All the homies, y'all know who they are. I'm right here. Love y'all. Thank you, Lucky. Hey, we out. Hell yeah, bro. Hey.